da, 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 da. Whoa, what the? Is that happening? Is that sound? Am I hearing it from my ear or your ear? <laughs> it's I'm Tuesday. Gonna... Katie's here. Hello. I'm actually not this red in person. There's something weird with the lighting. It's making me look like a lobster right now. I'm here. I think the live chat should also be here. i got to make sure that's visible. <laughs> Let's click that for a second. Maybe I should have done that before the show started. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Shane Hannigan's Live. <laughs> and, oh, why is it coming out of here? Is that happening? Is that no. Sound? My hearing is wrong. My hearing is wrong. Oh. <laughs> it's Tuesday. Is this 126? This is why we're still support. Because our shows are messed up all the time. <laughs> Welcome to our professional show. If this is your first time watching, we just got back from Vancouver, so I'm just like my brain. Uber uh, professional. Uh, we usually start with the theme song, correct? Yeah, why not? Yeah, it goes on like this. Whoa, is it? Rig. Oh, are you getting that signal? Are we losing yeah, our camera I'm too? Are we losing everything? Who's it recording? <laughs> I think it's podcasting. It should be time for. It's probably Shanna Hannigan's live. <sighs> I hate technology. <laughs> uh, is it recording? Is it broadcasting? It should be time for. Shanna Hannigan's live. Assuming it's you know working. What are you gonna do yeah, for this? Who one? knows? What am I gonna do? I'm gonna yeah. work on uh, some tonal work of Silly Kingdom. Oh, Kate is going to work on some total casting things. Here <laughs> is going to speak. And we're going to act. We're going to act. <laughs> this tech thing just threw me off my groove, man. Come on, we can get through it. We can get through the theme song. We can get through the theme song. <laughs> Everything was going so well. And the computer went mad. Kate is going to do thing. She's going to do thing. And we're going to talk about Ben Yeah. We're going to talk about Ben Cap. Great. I'm glad I haven't tumbled this yet. <laughs> I hate technology. I wish it would work for you and for me. This is Shannon Hagen. I hate you. Oh my gosh. Technology. Thank you for joining us. If this is your first time watching oh, Shanahan's Live, I'm Katie Shanahan. This is my brother, Shaggy Shanahan. I hope my volume is loud enough. Um, <laughs> we are, we are comic-making siblings from Canada. Yes. And um, I'm going to work on a comic and we're going to chat about we stuff. We do things so, proper. Yeah, so for the next hour and a bit, um, we're just going to chat about mostly uh, the amazing weekend we had at Van Calf, the Vancouver Comic Arts Festival, but also movies, comics, whatever, and uh, feel free to join in the chat. Uh, I actually realized uh, what my mistake was. I had the you YouTube do? open as well just to see if it was working, but for that some reason it was playing out of my audio interface but not out of my headphones. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm trying to tumble, but I'm having some. That happened. I think everything might be a bit shaky because uh, it might be stormy today, so uh, we'll yeah, keep you guys posted. Uh, so you're watching Hannigan's Live. We have the live chat open, of course. It's the Google Plus Q and A, the fun that is that. Uh, we got such folks as Andrew Murray, one and only, is here saying, "Woo, the show starts." Hello, Andrew. Hello. Uh, Chris, the host with the most to boast. Uh, is also here saying, excellent, I shall join in the drawing times, of course. Great. This is a learning show and an inspirational show. We teach you to be while <laughs> we do it. Uh, we also got Chelsea of Buchanan. Welcome, Buchanan. Chelsea. See, I think Google Hangouts excellent. might be the problem. Maybe. Possibly. It's, still, still, uh, it's, it's, oh, it's the only solution. <laughs> That's what Aerial Channels is saying. Dang, Shaggy, how many instruments can you play? Well, clearly not this one well when I'm under stress of technological issues. <sighs> Maybe you should join us at the end, and I'll do like an ending credit song so I can feel better. Because I know I can do that better. I've done the theme song so many times. Yeah, we should do that. a closer when we're all warmed up and excited and yeah. happy about It'll be stuff. like the end of like Saturday Night Live when it's like the piano and everyone's on stage. It's like... And then it's like all saxophone and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Just That's like the that. next issue we need. I'll, I'll move on to saxophone for the next theme song. That's what's going to happen. Uh, before now, welcome to Shaggins Live every Tuesday, maybe Wednesdays. Maybe at some time. If you're watching from the West Coast, welcome for the first time ever. Good to have you here. Uh, if you're at VanCaf and you're watching on Google+, go in the chat and say, yes, I was at VanCaf, because we'd like to hear from you. We'd like to hear, uh, how was your VanCaf? Mm. Which leads us to the first question. Katie, how was your VanCaf? My VanCaf was excellent. I had an amazing time. This was our second time going to VanCaf. Um, the first time was two years ago, which was the con's very first year, and I have to say, 
Um, FanCAF is one of my very favorite comic festivals, and it's only three years old. And uh, Shannon Campbell, who runs it, um, and all the volunteers and everybody uh, working behind the scenes do an excellent job. Um, they know exactly what you need as an exhibitor. They know exactly you know, the kind of stuff that people want to see when they come in, and, you know, everybody's just excellent. They'll watch your table for you when you need to do a panel. They go break change for you. They, uh, just everybody's really, really wonderful. And Vancouver is gorgeous. I miss it already. <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful, so lush, so full of life, and, uh, um, you know, happy to be home, but it was an excellent weekend. A lot of fun. Oh, we got some corrections here. So Chelsea is correcting me since I butcher mostly every name on the show. Uh, <laughs> it's a Beckert. Silly German names and silent U's times three. Wait, that's not times three. That's a hamster face, which is like the cross eyes. With a lot of U's. And the, the, the hamster mouth. Like, Mwah. I think that's what it is, right? Or is it times yeah. three? It's either U's it times three mouth. or it's hamster time. I'm not sure. But either way, it's a good time with Chelsea on the show. <laughs> We've also, of course, Andrew saying, I hope Van Cap was good, and I also hope you enjoyed, for a second, I thought I said Xmas. Like, I hope you enjoyed your Christmas. I hope you enjoyed X Men if you saw it tonight. Yes, I did. We'll get to that in a bit because I think. Bandcap because there's more than this Katie giving one paragraph. There's <laughs> lots just, to talk about. Yeah, I, I will. I'm just I'm, I'm I'm posting the Tumblr, so I'm kind of in two places at once right now. You see, folks, the best kind of show is the one that promotes itself during it, so we don't actually talk to you guys. So we're just like, <laughs> shut up now. We gotta talk about the show to get people to watch it. Please. No, just get, I'm always dead. People. Just give me a minute. <laughs> uh, what we got down here? We got <laughs> mad. Uh, all right, and just also heads up the um, the Google Google G plus. Hangout chat question thing is less of a chat question board as it is a random skirmish <laughs> of things popping up when you least suspect it. Because when mm -hmm. you guys post, is not necessarily when I get it. Or because there is a delay in the show, we'll be talking about stuff, and then like 10 minutes later, your thing will pop, and I'll be like, whoa, what's this? Um, so to encourage through the system of voting, uh, there are numbers beside all the chat bubbles that you can like click to like vote up and be like, oh my god, I want him to talk about this one next, because this is the best comment ever. Mm -hmm. um, and whoever gets the most votes before I talk to them wins. So uh, be sure to vote up your comments, kids, and uh, we'll see what's going on. Uh, we got uh, we got tech support here saying, where is uh, where are you in the same exhibit hall as the first year, is the question. Um, no, actually, we were moved into um, kind of like, I think, the gymnasium area. There were basketball nets, but still a really nice space, nice big open windows. Um, I think bigger than the last room, maybe. I think there were more people this year. Was for sure. but it's tricky to say because the glass window room <laughs> feels bigger because you know open spaces do that, right? Um, my image keeps disappearing for some reason. I'm still there if you can't see me, right? Uh, I see you. Hi. <laughs> now everyone's on my screen has like a little bubble going like ah, you failed. Um, yeah, I was told the gym is bigger. Um, this is at the Roundhouse in Vancouver. This is down at, was it the Roundhouse York? Is it Yorkdale or Yorkville Street? It's or in, um, what's that station y called? Yaletown. Yaletown, Yaletown Yale stop. So Yaletown, Roundhouse stop. Really nice place, just by a park that's just before the water. Um, one of the most beautiful locations you can go to for conventions. Because, like, oftentimes, like, you know, okay, you may watch those, like, convention recap music videos with the nice, you know, slow motion pans around all these cosplayers that do their pose and have a sword and do a thing and are like, mmm, and like these are like kind of <laughs> nice locations sometimes, or it's like the garage or whatever. Uh, those are like the idealized locations, but a lot of cons you go to aren't often, the exterior is not usually like the nicest place ever, you know. Mm -hmm. The Roundhouse is one of the nicest locations you can go to for a convention, because it is right by a giant park. Um, it's It's got, you know, trees and greenery, and, and the Jappa Dog booth was there. <laughs> not sure. That's a whole conversation. That's a whole really episode good. in yeah. itself. We'll get to that in a bit. But uh, the Roundhouse is a beautiful venue. Um, but we were definitely this time, I, I'm, if they say it's bigger, I'll say the gym is bigger. But I thought the neat thing was we were lined up, <laughs> our desks were like kind of underneath the basketball nets. So I was hoping that we'd be able to like, take advantage of that. It didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> but at least I took advantage of it in the sense of wit. Because since Tony was right near some basketball nets, and he's like, yeah, I wish we could do something with that. Uh, and he's the one who writes that Delilah Dirk, of course. I'm like, you could mm -hmm. set up your little cutout of Delilah by the net and call it Delilah Dunk. Oh! <laughs> so that's all I got from the day. Which we, of course, drew at the Drink and Draw on yes. Saturday. There's many things, man. We're jumping ahead. but So kids, go look up uh, Tony Cliff, Delilah Dunk, the new basketball <laughs> series he's coming out with, the first second books. <laughs> 
swashbuckling basketball at its finest. Who needs Space Jam 2? We got Delilah Dunk. Oh, man. That's all I need. Turkish B-ball. <laughs> uh, we got a lot of chat here, man. We we are we are just promoting this show really well. You guys got nothing to do on a Tuesday. Uh, Either way, thanks for hanging out. Jeez. Um, yeah, it's it's a nice venue, and it was, it was you know what what I also liked about uh, the Van Caps in prior years and this one. Just well, we've only been to one before, but still, both years. There's a lot of space behind the table too for you guys, because uh, some cons you find yourself either right against the wall, and mm-hmm. there's really no room to navigate. But you know, and I always dream one day like I'm like, oh, if we had a lot of space behind the table, I want to set up one of those like beanbag games where like you yeah. huck beanbags across the table and try to win points and things like that. You know, yeah, or like a mini awesome. inflatable castle. That only I could go into. So if people are like, I'd like a copy of the Kingdom, I'm like, I have to go get it from the castle. And I'm like, go into this castle and close the door. And then I'll That's release all these they want to come in too. And flares and fun sounds. They're like, what's going on in that castle? And it's like, wee! They come out and be like, you know, okay, guys, see, I gotta go back and sell this book. I'm like, oh, that was fun in that castle. <laughs> you know, here you go. Here's the book. <laughs> now I'm going back into the castle. It's <laughs> so mean. It'd be awful. It'd be fun, awfully fun. Um, yeah, so uh, same same location, just different venue in the location. Because there's also like an art show and like beatboxing going on. I heard the, that. Yeah. yeah. It was interesting. I didn't get a chance to check it out because they also locked off the bathrooms from that area. You can only access it from inside there. And I'm like, ah oh, man, so I had to walk mm-hmm. to the other one. Um, Van Caff, very much like TCAF. Like I, I talked to you guys about how TCAF is one of the greatest comic events ever in history. Uh, because of the enthusiasm, like you know, first of all, the free entry also allows people to be more like willing to take risks with their with their precious dollars and things like that. Um, yeah, that's but the spirit you can spend. Yeah, you know, but the spirit of comics is so you know, as much as I say it's alive here in Toronto, just as much in Bandcamp. It's a newer event too, so people are still just learning about it. But when they get there, some guy like could just be walking by like, hey guys, what's all this about? I'm like, it's about comics and it's about you. Enjoying well, them, actually and you'll be like, really yes. Happy. Yeah, what made me feel happy was there were a couple people that um, told me they didn't actually even know about Bandcamp until I tweeted about it. Um, so I was like, wow, yay, my Twitter works. But like, we were able to actually introduce some people to a great local event. I was like, yes, you must keep coming every year. So, so voted up to three points. Andrew Murray is so far in the lead. Uh, with three votes. I think the next one who might win is Molly if she could beat three. If, uh, <laughs> unless I answer that question. Andrew's asking, what are the major differences between TCAF and VanCAF uh, from your experience behind the table and out on the floor? Um, and of course, the names CAF mean Comic Arts Festival, T for Toronto, mm-hmm. and Van for Vancouver. So, Katie, what are the major differences between TCAF and VanCAF? Well, right now it's just size because VanCAF is still very young. Um, like TCAF takes up two big floors in the Toronto Reference Library and it's jam packed. VanCAF is still kind of uh, on the small side. But I mean, it's going. TCAF is what it, it already celebrated its tenth year, so I know VanCaf's going to get there for sure. Um, they both bring in excellent guests. Uh, they're both great. Um, couldn't be happier with both. <laughs> <laughs> this year's uh, big lineup was we had a whole bunch of folk from the Bee and Puppy Cat out there at VanCaf. Uh, Natasha. Of Allegri, course, uh, Natasha who, Allegri. Who we were too shy to go say hi to. You should have gotten in line to get me and Puppy Cat, but you didn't do it. <laughs> I wanted to get in line to get the book to get it signed, but I felt kind of weird because I'm like, I'm basically one table next to them behind a table, and I'm going to get out of there to line up for the table, but I'm like, I'm a professional too. I should just be able to walk over there and be like, hey, and I didn't do that either, so I did neither and <laughs> ran out of books, so that's my story. Oh. <laughs> uh, who else was at that table? We have uh, a couple chums there, Frank and Becky. Yeah, Becky and Frank and uh, um, Madeline Flores, who is so funny and so good. Um, what's her? I'm trying to think of her Twitter ha- handle, and I, I can't picture it. Um, but she does the great comic, um, Help Us Brave Warrior, and it's really funny, um, funny sticky note stuff. And she's doing... Um, st- I think she's she's doing writing on Bean Puppy Cat, if I'm correct. But yeah, just a lot of great, great folk. Yeah, yeah. I should no, have my so research in front of me, but I'm working on a Silly Kingdom page, so I'm just like. Well, do you have like all your purchases and stuff in front of you? We have to reference them. Yeah, like that. actually, I have a. Yeah, yeah. Wait. Uh, quickly, Molly's saying, <laughs> with two points, Molly's saying you guys had a lot of space on your side uh, because you were against the wall. Dot dot dot. I was on the end cap of the middle and Aww. only had one side of the table, and it was super claustrophobic. So at least you guys had a good spot. Well, if, if to give some contrast to that, like, uh, we had a, 
a tea cafe had a really interesting spot, but tricky spot. Because our desk was right at the entrance of the second floor area, but it was facing forward, and right behind us was all the desks. So basically, this is our mm -hmm. table. And uh, let's see. So we're here, like, ooh, books. And people are going to be over here, like, ooh, books as well. Um, but right behind us was where the horizontal table started. So the gap you see where my eye is is where people would walk in to get to their tables. So basically, our back was an yeah. entrance way to the tables back at TCAP. So it was, a, it was an advantageous spot for people approaching us, but a disadvantage for storing our stuff. So we kind of had our banner. Uh, Stu was great, gracious enough to let us put it kind of beside him. Yeah, our buddy so Stu Livingston. You, have, you wouldn't see our banner if you looked at us. You'd have to look at us from the side. So and banners we, are important um, for people looking for tips on a, a tabling. Like, you want to get your displays as vertical and big as possible, so a banner is great for that because you look across the room and it's kind of like you you're not you can't really read books from there, but if you see, oh, boom, there's a Silly Kingdom yeah. banner. And oh, I know sure, Make sure your titles are up top on your banner as well, because if they're more in the middle or something, you're standing in front of that section. This is yeah. a pro tip, kids, because you want the banner to go above your head so people can see you and be like, oh, so either that's going to be your name, like the creator's name is up there, or the title is up there. So if that means you got to like, reformat it, if, if the banner is like literally one of your book covers, you may want to consider reformatting it for like most advantageous view, because people are kind of like scoping out the horizon. Um, that's why in previous TCAS we had a really nice spot too, because when you enter the second floor, we were against the back wall corner, but you could see our banner above like everyone else in the middle. So like if you were looking for us, like oh shoot, there they are, they're just right straight ahead. Mm. Um, and and also because uh, these kind of events have so many people too, and so many different colors and so many different things to look at, that you know a banner is the one thing. If someone is out of their way trying to find you, a banner is a good way to do that. You know, there's also a map, of course, too, and numbers, but there's no table numbers when you get there. Well, that's so it. Like, yeah, you're actually counting you tables. Know, you know where table H six, but nobody has the numbers up or the letters up. So it's like where where's H six? I don't know. Um, yes. Uh, Molly's also saying, hey guys, glad you made it home, okay? We're uh, live! I'll also color some comics at the same time as Katie. Winky, Winky. Uh, we also had a little creepy porpoise chime in and saying, hey Shanahan's, I finally got off work early enough to watch a Shanahan's episode. Yay, welcome, oh, creepy. Glad to have you here. Um... Okay, we got Lillian RM27 saying, Shaggy, I blame you for my uh, addiction to Suits and Steven Silver. <laughs> now the suits I can understand because for like one episode I was losing my mind and then I stopped watching at the episode when the guy spilled a coffee on an affidavit and I'm like no too embarrassing and I just you can't handle like, awkwardness cold turkey I left the show so listen you know this is a warning to all you showrunners if you add an awkward scene that I know is going to get someone in so trouble if I'm the 100, out if the 100 has an awkward scene in its next episode are you going to stop watching if, the 100 in the next episode of the 100 Bellany spills a coffee on what's-your-face's gut. I'll be like, done. oh! <laughs> you'll be oh, done. Melody, <laughs> you're going to get it now! And I'll turn it off and never come back. Wow. No, because I can't handle that stuff. Because I, you know, uh, it's so embarrassing. Rough. <laughs> rough but gruff, I say. Now, the Stephen Silver is interesting. Because I, I, my, my addiction to Stephen Silver comes from his design work for the Clerks animated series. And I haven't really watched Kim Possible yet, but I like what he's done for that. Yeah, I've only seen little clips of it, but it looks good. Yeah, no, I heard Kim Possible is one of those good shows. It's like, oh, it's fun and it's interesting. But I never really, I haven't followed up much on him outside of my love for his design for the Kevin Smith characters, because I, I love what he did with it. And, and the figurines based on those are some of my favorite collectibles. Like, I, for the longest time, I had, like, the, the Silent Bob with the cigarette and the, the smirky look to the side just kind of around my desk as inspiration, because I'd look at it and I'd be like, I feel better. <laughs> it, was, it was this like little thing that inspired me for some reason because it was like it was a cartoon. It was the first figurine I had that was literally a cartoon realized because uh, you know it was an in-action figure, which meant it had no joints or movable parts. But that mm -hmm. meant it was kind of a perfect little statuette, and it looked exactly like the series. So you know, anyway, that's another story. So I don't know how I got you on Steven Silver. Oh, she says Steven Universe and correction. Okay, so <laughs> I just yapped. <laughs> so let's, let's back. Well, Steven Silver let's, is also excellent. Let's days of future past this. I'm Wolverine and going back in time to fix this conversation. Spoiler. Um, <laughs> Steven Universe is the best show on TV right now, or on the web, depending where you watch it. And it is I in my know. top three holy trilogy of Archer, Gravity Falls, and Steven Universe. <laughs> um, these are the finest animated shows you can ever watch, and I will stand by that. Thank you. <laughs> Kel McDonald saying hi, hi guys. Hi, Kel. Kel too, of course, was also at the Van Calf. Yes, yes. 
I feel that's, bad because uh, I I meant to say goodbye to a whole bunch of people after Van Cap, and I was like, I'll see you at the after party. I'll see you at the after party. And then um, after we grabbed dinner, I was just so done. Yeah, <laughs> like we, we had fun, but like I I got major con plague. Um, kind of as soon as we landed, I had a great time. Um, don't get me wrong. So if being sick is the price of that, fine. I don't care. Um, but like as soon as we landed, my throat started getting that tickle, and then by the next I day, it was just full on like. Just coughing. I feel awful. it's the airplane that's doing it to you. It's I like think the it's airplane. Air you, you've of- never been good with airplane health. No. Do you remember the only time? Okay, like how long were we in Europe on that Kentucky tour? Three About weeks. Sixteen days. I was sick the whole time. And I got better, and then the sick. I got everybody else sick, and then the sickness came back to me. <laughs> and, like, it's bad because when I have a bad, when I lose my voice and I have a terrible sickness. It's like you shouldn't talk. You should let your voice rest, but I'm fascinated by the way my voice sounds, so I just keep talking and rasping. Do you want to do a radio play? Because we can have, like, I can have you as the, like, the lady at the counter, like, what would you like, sugar? <laughs> would you want some waffles on that syrup? Or something like yeah, that. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let me immortalize it till the next uh, trip. Uh, we also have to give great credit to Kel, because she brought me from the United States of the oh, Americas a do you box have it? of the elusive Pop-Tarts with the cupcake flavoring on the inside. Now let me yeah. let me fill this for you guys. If you guys are from America, you have no no dice in this board game because you have all these luxuries. But in Canada, our pop tarts are pretty straightforward and simple. Like the most exciting we go is s'mores. Otherwise, you're stuck with strawberry for life. You know, cook maybe apple, or brown no, cinnamon. No, no. But Cal here, she, she went out of her way to give the hookups. With, uh, <laughs> You know, and, and there's a world of Pop Tarts out there that we have yet to discover. Like, I, it is it is my mission in life now uh, to find them. Because uh, recently, uh, some friends of mine went to the States and he brought back me a red velvet. I'm oh. like, what? And now we got Cal bringing me this, these cupcake fields? Like, what is this? So, since my birthday is coming up next week or something it like is. that, I assume. Yeah. Sure. I would yeah. like you all to send me American Pop Tarts <laughs> to the following address. Oh, wait. So, right to Shanahanigan's Spielbox. Live. Spielbox <laughs> Shanahanigan's Live. Send me Pop Tarts. <laughs> I'll post it. If nah, you nah, want to nah, send nah. you cards, I'll post the most often. I don't need people to send me Pop Tarts. <laughs> <laughs> That's just weird. I like, I like the more, it's more exciting to like find them or be given them so I don't have to buy them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so the next, you time you see, next time you come to an American convention, please bring weird flavored Pop Tarts. Yeah. Bring me flavored stuff. And apparently you guys, like, we, we talk to this all, anytime we go to a con, when we cross borders and stuff, you know, you guys don't have the coffee crisp uh, and the Kinder Surprises. And apparently the Arrow Bars, too, which is so... I didn't know Arrow. I knew coffee crisp. I didn't know Arrow Bars was... Uh, the Arrow Bar is so dull. We have, like, Arrow Spheres now. Orbs of Arrow, delicious. And now they're, like, orange flavored, too. We didn't even stop at chocolate. We went to town, son. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we also have a lot of other questions down here. I've been neglecting. Uh, once again, the chat in Google Plus makes little to no sense. Sometimes the newest one goes at the top. Sometimes it's in the middle. And sometimes it's upside down. So I have no idea what's going on. So be sure to vote up your comments. Or if you see a comment you like, vote it up because you're like, oh, man, I want them to address what they are saying. Vote it up. Uh, I'll just jump to the bomb quickly. We got Matthew Twitchout. Saying, hey, what's up, Shaggy and Katie? Ignoring the technological problems. How have you both been? Well, Katie's dying of con plague. Uh, I didn't really sleep on the plane last night. We landed. <coughs> oh. There you go. Yep. There Enjoy you it, go. folks. Sorry. You can't <laughs> yeah. catch it from the internet. That'll be on the next issue of Silly Kingdom. That was on the page. I'm going to cough at everybody's book. I guarantee. <laughs> um. I was saying things, and I forget what I was saying. Uh, how you <laughs> uh, doing? What we're doing, yeah. Oh, what was I doing? Yeah, our flight landed last, this morning, I guess, around 12.30. You got in late. And they lost my luggage again. It's not a trip if you don't lose your luggage. I don't I, get I, it. I, I tweeted earlier today, since 2011, almost, I pretty much, at least in one of the ways, either to the con or back from, I've lost my luggage in transit for some yeah. reason. And this was a direct flight, and I lost my luggage. <laughs> And I'll put her luggage in after me, and yeah, I lost my luggage. It's weird. And it's like, because I'm going to show up at the conveyor belt. I see everyone, like, it, it's, you know, like, in those uh, old Christmas stories when, like, all the orphans get candy except for one, and you all see them. No, no, this is even worse. All the orphans get parents except uh, for one. Yeah, and I was going to say those happy, and It's almost like the box of kittens in, like, you know, Oliver and Company. And they all go off happy, like, ha, 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 luggage, and Ooh, my bag. And they will go off, and I'm like, I hope there's one for me. And then the conveyor belt stops. And then the janitor's like, 
they're all done and sweeping and it goes away and I'm just like shuckleberries and I walk <laughs> off with no adoptive parents. You're the you're the kid that gets grabbed and sent to go find diamonds in the bottom of the bayou. Yeah, they're the ones who break my spine so I can clean chimneys. Oh. Back in the freaking Oliver Company days. Well, no, that was New York in like the seventies or eighties. I was talking rescuers, but <laughs> oh, that works too. I never liked the rescuers. I it's, think it's, it's because it was taste. it was it's the very, era it's when very Disney. Yummy era. It's when Disney really didn't give a shit about cleanup. They left so much pencil and ink. Hey, 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 hey. That, that is a delight to animators to see the progress. It is, but for me, it felt like every frame was dirty, like you coughing on your comics. But they were experimenting so with it, too. Like, it's like 100, 100 <laughs> like, well, Rescue but, it. Yeah, but it was There's like one donations <laughs> <was> through the <laughs> pencil work and everything. Like, as a kid, it felt gross. Like, I'm not talking, this ain't no, like, hero bear, where it's like, ooh, it's sketchy. This is like, <laughs> Uh, uh, there's Robin Hood. <laughs> You're like, all right, remember this. Remember Lady and the Tramp, all the mud stuff, all the seas in the mud when the dog sniffed around the mud? Take that mud and put it on, like, every frame of Rescuers, and that's how it felt as a kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it could be artistic genius, but for me, I'm just like... <laughs> it, it was a dirty look, but, I mean, it was interesting to see the, the dirty, roughness. Dirty film. The rescue. <laughs> That is a filthy film. I also didn't know how that diamond fit in that skull. Did the guy swallow it or put it through his eye? Like, jeez. That's a no good sense. question. She called Disney out on this. Yeah. It's probably also, related to something. Disney less though. child endangerment these days, I find. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> what's up with that Disney? <laughs> <laughs> we can take it. We need more orphans in your films. And more chewing tobacco? Because that looked delicious. Yeah. We already talked about how, like, me watching... Uh, Roger Rabbit, I didn't really understand that he had a drinking problem, Valiant. Oh, I yeah, thought he no. had, like, butterscotch juice, and everyone was giving him shit for it because they were jealous. You're like, what? That looks delicious. Yeah, I'm like, that looks great. I want to start drinking, you know, because oh, seriously, yeah. you just had this, for all I knew, I thought it was, like, butter beer as a kid. That didn't exist yet, but the next best thing would have been butterscotch juice. I'm like, man, Eddie Valiant sure likes his butterscotch juice. I like some. <laughs> Give me oh, that chewy tobacco while we're at it. Child. I want to spit while I play baseball. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, we went way off. So long story short, I finally got my luggage. But Good. Um, So the next con, hey, San Francisco, Seattle place, Comic Con. I'm losing my luggage for you soon. Yay. It's going to be fun. All I had San was like Red candy Seattle and laundry. Place. What the hell? They stopped me for that. <laughs> we got lots of people in the chat. We got Sarah from a while back saying hi. Hi. What's happening, Sarah? We also got our following up saying, I will have to split my time between the playoff games and this live stream. Which games is playing off? I don't follow the sports. <laughs> what is happening in the sports? Yes. Who's winning the sports game? You could tell us now. <coughs> uh, let's go through a few more chats and we'll get back to uh, some more talk of the place, the thing. Uh, we got Glenn saying, geez, how many Pop-Tarts flavors did you end up getting now? Uh, whichever ones you brought me, Glenn, plus the one Cal brought me. So... Any more people want to give me, which is appreciated. We'll take them. Um, we got, wait, who's reading this? We got Caddy Kat, Fedruk saying, it was really cool to meet you guys. Thanks for coming to hang out and stuff. Yeah. How many Van how many VanCaf folk are in the... Uh, yeah, that was our question. So how many of you folks are from VanCaf? Raise your hand at home. I don't care if I can't see it. Do it right now. It feel good. <laughs> or you could write in the chat, I'm from Bandcamp. Yeah, and then we could be like, hey, if you stop by. And uh, it's always good to meet folks. I believe, I believe show. correct me if I'm wrong, um, just because I can't remember user handles, but Katie, no, you gave us, you do Blind Springs, which is a beautiful webcomic. Yes? I just got double check. Well, just to go into, uh, yes. I, got, I was gifted some books from Morgan Shandro here. Uh, we got, what's this? Ar Archie? Yes, that's right. I just wanted to double check. Yes. Archeon here, as well as Epinosia, the Mighty, and Bar. I don't know if I have my gifted. lovely Blind Springs uh, pins or I actually have a bunch of things that are gifted to us, and I don't know if I have them all at my desk right now. It's like lovely pins. Yeah, we have a lot of really nice pins. Yeah, all super nice. I think you might have more of them, because I think you you got like all the... Anything we like put on the desk, we put over in a certain special section. Yeah, I put my pins somewhere safe. Um, so they, I can't show them off. Um, one thing I want to quickly show off, um, if tech support is watching, uh, I got a copy of Nelvana, 
the uh, of the Northern Lights, which is she is the uh, first Canadian superheroine. Um, and I think she's the first actual superheroine, if you uh, go back and look at the history of it. But uh, she, um, yes, it was kind of one of those comics that was lost in time and then um, was reprinted. Into Wait, so if Nelvana so. was the first superheroine and Spring Shoe Jack was the first superhero, can we have like a team up? Maybe. Maybe now Spring that she's Hill. back. Or no, is the Scarlet Pumpernel before Spring Heel Jack? Probably, right? I'm not sure. Because the Scarlet Pumpernel pre- predated like England jumping shoes, I didn't mm-hmm. take it. Sure. Those weren't invented yet. <laughs> but yes, um, so... thank you, Pope, for my contributor's copy. Yay! Because I did a print for it, so everybody who did a print got a free book. Wouldn't that be a crazy sort of like League of Extraordinary Gentlemen Avengers team up type deal where you have like all the first of their kind heroes like you have Nelvana, Spring Hill Jack, Scarlet Pumpernel, Zorro, mm-hmm. you know, something like that? That'd be interesting. That'd be like a rights mess probably now. But uh, mm-hmm. we also have Kitty Fedrock saying hi, yes, ha ha ha. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to double check because I was like, <laughs> if I get the wrong game, I'd be like jerk, yes. Yes, but Blind Springs is a beautiful webcomic, and you all should check it out. And um, Katie made amazing wooden buttons that I have somewhere safe in my luggage that I want to show off, but I don't think I can right now. But they are lovely, and they smell like delicious wood, wooden, spicy, spicy woodness. Yeah. Very nice things. Well, since you have all this stuff, so I believe we also got a little booklet comic sampler here somewhere. Uh, if, if you're watching the show and you're the one who gave it to us, please refresh my memory because I have to go back upstairs and look for all these things. Cause I haven't even looked at I haven't even looked at my candy bag. All right, I just got oh. you know, when, when we arrived. Actually, right, what I do have. <laughs> is that, oh, because, that's okay, so basically, when I started the Vancouver Adventure, um, I spent my first uh, day and a half with my fiance Jerry, running around looking at all the beautiful wonderfulness that is Vancouver. We wandered all over the place. We went to the beaches. It was a bit rainy. We went to the park. We went to the aquarium. And then um, I went off to meet you guys. And the first thing we did within five minutes was buy a buttload of candy. Because well, we went we to the roll. shop that was in the north end of Vancouver on the, on the little you know, island sea shape. And there was a shop, I forgot what it's called, but it had two giant pocky boxes above the store like this. And I'm like, we have to go in there. And what did we find? Animal Crossing candies. Check it oh, out. Look at how cute yeah. that is. That's precious. <laughs> There's a little, um, who's the little pink llama? Uh, oh, God, what, yeah, no. This was the dog. Uh, no, why is it's, the left It's Reese, one? right? I know, yeah, Reese from Recycle. Reese. Yeah. And then her blue dude is... Oh, that's What's-His-Face, yeah. Some, okay, yeah. Uh, and then that's Isabel. a mini-pack of make-your-own-suit here. Check this noise. This happy dude. And you just uh, <laughs> oh make God. your own sushi with this. This is really nice. I got uh, uh, also, Tetris candy. Did you get the Tetris candy the as well? Tetris. Well, it's a hybrid. This is a mix of Pio Pio, Pop Feed, or whatever in Tetris. It's all good stuff. Yeah, and I think um, we both got the super soda. Oh, soda! We got the blue one. Okay, because yeah. normally in Toronto, yeah. we normally just have the hot, le- like the lemon ones. I got this red one that has all this fun on it, and it's, it's like, oh! Uh, and mine, mine's more. <laughs> Period piece, and yours is more contemporary, I believe. Right? Yeah, mine. Um, if I'm just gonna talk quickly, so mine's like they look like Gem and the Holograms eating uh, the blue candy. Oh, soda! Oh, excellent. <laughs> and then yours, yours is like a kind of more uh, traditional uh, feudal Japan. Yes, it's a different time. <laughs> a different time for candy. It was the dark times. Sorry, and then this um, one more. I got this little. Uh, I don't know what the heck it is, but it's like Pikachu something something. So, I mean, this is how we explore Vancouver. This is how we blow our budgets on the first day. <laughs> Whenever we, we I hang out with you, it's just candy and madness. Well, it was also, they had all this Pocky and stuff, too. So we got some rum raisin Pocky, which was nice. Oh, that's good. Uh, for the show. I'm actually uh, going to crack into this peachy thing right here. This looks really good. I might, I might make some mini sushi later on the show so you guys can <laughs> oh, join me on a, on a culinary adventure. But for now, I just want to do some more of the chats because we've got a lot coming in. Yeah. Um... Let's see. Uh, I'm going to read a bunch of these and we'll get back to Van Kevin Koo. We also have Molly saying, thank you. I'm glad you like Archer. Uh, high five. You're welcome. Uh, Melissa asking if I got oh, my luggage. Good. Yes, I actually did get my luggage. It arrived today. Um, slightly dented on the left side. <laughs> yeah, they really hammered that thing. They're really bringing it up a bit. Uh, tech support saying, oh, yeah, no fun of the Northern Lights. Yeah, we got that action. Good. I just want to uh, make sure you didn't pick up a copy because uh, I'm going to bring this one. 
Molly's saying, that super soda candy is so awesome. I love Vancouver for its diverse, uh, diversity in food and candy shops. Lots of Asian-themed shops. If you ever need to top up on any of those things, just let me know. Oh, we, we will need to top up. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're good for oh, that. Molly's coming to visit. Oh, cool. Molly, the, the crepe shop um, next to the candy shop was closed on the last day when me and Jerry wanted to get some. Oh, we Can went you back. bring me a crepe? <laughs> Yeah, send us a crepe. Can you bring me order, crepes? Can you order of crepe. <laughs> Over the plane. Chris the host. One of the ice cream ones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and a cool you know those coolers they keep like hearts and organs and just get one of those. Yeah. Ship it over. Speaking of inspiration, says Chris the host, I got into the animation program. What? Chris is in the animation program, so thanks. Oh, for that's you. excellent. Thank you guys. Uh, everyone, if you have a glass or a boot, raise it to Chris. Uh, you know, you've done it, son. You done. <laughs> That's you done my Victorian speech for everyone. Is you done it? You done it. This is the first step in a future of animation. Where will you go with it? Who knows? Because I don't. Because I, I don't know where I didn't do animation. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's lots of options in the future. There's character design, background animation, uh, storyboard, yeah, uh, yeah. scenery, uh, like a real editor, which I'm trying to look into getting. But man, let's see what happens with that. Because uh-huh. that's kind of. That's kind of what I do anyway. It's all After Effects and you know, voices. I applied to one. Let's see what happens. So congratulations. Congratulations. Draw. Keep drawing. Draw, draw, draw. Draw, draw, draw. Practice, that's practice, my, draw, my, draw. My tip. <laughs> uh, let's go down to the bottom again because I think that's where the chat says. But anyway, how many people came... See, also when new chats show up, I lose all the other ones. Uh, how many people came to your stand? Uh, well, we sold out of Still the Kingdom, so pow. Yeah. That's what you got to do. Uh, we sold out of uh, Cautionary Fables 1 and 2, which uh-huh. you can also, uh, if you're on in the America side, you want to get yourself a copy of that, go to Kel McDonald's website there, uh, or look up Cautionary Fables and Fairy Tales, or Sorcery yeah. 101, all good we, options for linkability. We met a lot of really great people. We met a lot of really, really nice people. Um, yeah. We it was a couple really folks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean the, most, the most fun with the con is just chatting with people, so it was just really nice having everybody come up and... Super cool. And to segue into a story, the most stressful thing at a con is trying to sell books to kids because they are the oh. hardest market in the world because no one knows. They don't even know what they want. Here's my story. So, <laughs> we're, so the Kingdom, as we can agree, is kind of like an all age. I hope you agree. All ages book. It's not specifically catered to kids, but it has it's you know it's safe enough. There's nothing really crazy going on in there. So whenever you know people come to our table, like parents and stuff, they usually ask, "Is this stuff child friendly?" Because you know a lot of content may or may not be. You just never know. You can't tell by the cover. And we're like, "Yes, it is, of course." And so like I have this one little girl, and and the the kids will do it. They'll they'll <laughs> won't judge the book by the cover. They want they get proof. in there. They, they will get in that book. Like... So she so she had the, the Silly Kingdom open on the table, and she's go, like going through it. She's like studying it. And she's like this little little one, and just like page after page. And I'm just and the parents just I don't even know what the parents are just standing there like patiently. And I'm just there patiently because there's nothing really much to talk about. And she finally gets to the end of the book, and like the dad is all like, "Do you, do you want to get this? Do you want this?" And she like hugs her dad's leg, and she's like, "No." <laughs> she's like, no, Daddy, I don't want the Silly Kingdom. I'm like, ah. I'm like, kids are the hardest sell, man. They are a hard sell. Because they will read the whole thing and then just be like, no, no, what, no. What I usually do when there's a little kid, though, and this is something Jason Cafo taught me, because at San oh, Diego yeah. there was a little girl who, um, her dad, I think, was talking with Kazoo, um, but she was just kind of going through Silly Kingdom. And, like, she read it all, and then she went back and started reading it again. And so I went up to her and I was like, Oh, do you like it? And she was kind of shy and like, yes. So I was like, you can have it. Like, you, per, like you can just have it. Like, you can take it. And she was like, oh, and got so excited. And then she was like, asked her dad if it was okay. And he asked if it was okay. And I was like, yeah, it's fine. So, like, when they're really she little, like, I'm like, yeah, just like, pay, but let her think. I can't <laughs> I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> okay, you come over here. We'll talk. <laughs> we'll do business out back in the castle. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, Gee, yeah, okay. Yeah. I wish I knew we had that policy. I would have given her the book. But then again, knowing that she hates it so much. I know. She would have been like, no, I don't want it. (laughs) It's like sometimes I had to beg people to take uh, postcards. Just go to my site. There's free comics. Well, our other favorite story was involving kids was um, that winter (laughs) fair, the book fair, Canzine. And, like, there's this kid who'd come by our table and just, like flatten the spine and read this book and then leave in a storm and then come back a second time like half an hour later and then start taking the book with them and walking away and we're just like because ah, you don't want to like stop that child don't do that. Smoke off with it. 
uh, and then um, this is not for them unless they're. Well, I remember. I guess. I, I guess. I remember is his family was gonna buy it for all of them, but then he started screaming because he wanted it just for him, and he was like, ah, like kind of pulling at it, and we we're like, ah, like, we can't do anything, and like none of them are looking at us through the whole thing at all. Yeah, like this yeah, whole yeah. conversation is going on with us at the sidelines, and then it's just they thrust a five dollar bill at us and leave. <laughs> We well, sometimes like, it works out because that, that was that was a Saturday story, and usually Saturday, <laughs> and this was a case. Saturday is usually better days. Well, that was Canteen, though. I, that wasn't what happened. Oh no, 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 no I was coming. Everybody back. Like, usually, and back have like Saturdays are usually the busier, busier days. Mm-hmm. Sundays not so much, but like Saturdays was the hardest sell for me and kids. But like for some reason on Sunday, all the kids, like the two or three kids who were at the table, were like they were the ones who pushed for it. Like they were oh, yeah. like, can I get this? And I'm like, eee! you know, I'm like, I didn't have to do nothing. <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw like them come up with like little five dollar bills in their hand, just kind of looking for something. Yeah, yeah, and it's really nice when they do that because you're like, oh my gosh, they're making an investment in in our it's, futures. <laughs> it's hard though. Like I'm not really good at. Um, I could sell really great to, to people that want to buy <laughs> the book. If yeah, they don't yeah, yeah. Know what it is, I'm awful. Um, but like we we were tabling next to our buddy um, Steve Leculier, I believe is how it's pronounced. He does um, Una the Blade and Much the Miller's Son. Um, great cartooning, and he has like a really good pitch for Una the Blade. It's barbarian single mom, and then oh, what's that about? And then you, you go into like further. Oh, she goes on adventures with the, like her two little kids, and she fights monsters and and all this fun stuff. Um, but like I don't have that one blurb. So people will be like, oh, what's looking about? Like, oh, it's, it's kind of the first in a series that I work here. My brother writes it and I draw it. And, um, really? You don't do the one, the one line I've been using for like every time? I just, I, and, then, the and then Tremor the Monkeys. When they birthday. go, what's Tremor Monkeys? I'm like, yeah, oh, it's... <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's just, I, I freeze up. Well, or quickly I, to talk about how kids' reactions, we got Heather... <laughs> Uh, Gilbraith saying, I read Silly Kingdom to my friend's six-year-old daughter, and she loved it. Uh, she usually likes videos on YouTube more, but she was walking around the house reading it out loud, making funny voices for all the oh, characters and acting really out cute. the sound effects. Happy that's face. very Thank cute. Thank you, Heather, for that story, because it makes me feel better when kids are like, I don't want it! No, mother! Don't buy it! <laughs> that's uh, very sweet. That, that always takes me back to my one favorite hard sell story ever. This was back at um, C2E2. And like it was, the there's the, I don't know they're I think they're about my age, younger or older, whatever it is. And the three women like at the table, and one was like really like on the fence of buying you know silly king or something like that. And her yeah. friend was like, "I'll buy it for you. Here's five dollars." And she's like, "Eh." <laughs> I'm just like, "Oh my god!" So like, if, cruel. If, if this, if your friend buys it for you, <laughs> isn't enough to push you over the bar, I got nothing. I cannot, I cannot make this sale happen. You're like, I can just give it to you for free. (laughs) Well, a quick segue on that. Once again, we had the free buttons, the uh, limited edition Silly Kingdom. Two New Steed Indeed buttons where you do have a silhouette little unicorn behind the moon, beautifully colored by Jason Cope. Um, And that was the thing that's funny enough worked. When people walked by, kind of, you know, the quick pass, I'd be like, free buttons! And they're like, oh, free buttons. And, oh, it's a unicorn. And I'm like, no, you like those unicorns, do you? Well, guess what? You know, and then that's how I kind of tie people into the second book. And I'm like, oh, is this the first book? I'm like, yes, it is. It's about this. And, the second and that book. actually worked so, a couple times. And yeah, like a good really couple times. Cool. Like, this makes the button investment worth it, I find. Because, you know, for every 40 cent button, if we can get people interested in the series and, like, you know, if you're watching this show from that too, welcome. And yeah, this, welcome, this isn't welcome. just like me being a devious businessman. I'm no, not we're not like half fools. This is like you know, them. I'm the furthest the from a devious of, businessman. <laughs> of, of indie indie comics. This yeah, is how well you do. You know, drawing attention. You know, having your your catchphrase, your one line, and such and such. Uh, and I want to quickly read a couple more chats before we get to the topics. We got Chelsea uh, Buick. Uh, I ruined this again. Chelsea uh, Buick. Sorry, Chelsea. Saying I love the portable ATM. Volkswagen, that was neat. Yes, so outside of VanCaf, right beside the Jaffa Dog booth stand, which we'll talk about in a second, was this, you know, if you need money, there's a cash ATM, but it was, like, embedded in a, a car. There's I didn't a little, know what like, that was at first. Door. I thought it was a takeout stand because I couldn't see it properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, there's a lot of cool stuff, and, and that's where you get your money, and that was right beside the Jaffa Dog stand. Now, the Jaffa Dogs, oh, my goodness, this is the reason to go to Vancouver. You know, mountains, sure. <laughs> Jaffa Dog, oh my goodness. If you like hot dogs, and you're like, I feel my hot dog is lacking a certain everything. Well, go to Vancouver, and they just cover the hot dogs in the greatest stuff. 
Uh, I had one that was like a, a diced up kimchi on like a turkey dog, and then there's like the mayos with the oh, yeah the okonomi one, and that was um, good. they're all so good and they're also different and also unique. And I had one that was like you know had the seaweed and the mayo and had three cheeses on the inside. Uh, and I'm happy that like for the last three years they've been at Van Calf, <laughs> like the exclusive food purveyor. A van calf. I'm, you know, I distinctly I'm remember on the that. way out at the end of the con, like he specifically made sure he went up to the guy to be like, "Thank you so much for being here." And he was like, "Oh yeah, no problem." He was busy like chaining the you know the the stand to the truck trying to get it out. And I was like, "Is, is he gonna drop something if I distract him?" And I'm like, "Ask him." I'm like, "Thank you." <laughs> he can grab me. an extra hot dog. <laughs> 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 uh, Heather up. also said a little while ago with three votes. Oh my goodness, we have a bunch of three votes here. Let's see who can make it to four. They will be the winner of this episode. They could wear it on a sash. They could make their own sash, though. <laughs> uh, their own it, sash. it took me four different street pass cycles, but I finally managed to street pass you, Shaggy. So glad you are now immortalized inside my 3DS. Yeah. And I think at the time I was wearing a big, like, um, was it Nintendo question block on my head? Yeah, that's probably what I was wearing. Cool, I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad we street passed. Because I had someone who street passed me, like, two or three times also, who, like, wrote, Shaggy! And so I'm like, ah! <laughs> and I don't know where they are or who it is. <laughs> it scares me. Interesting. Um, we actually have Tony. Is Tony watching live? Because Tony it's put Tony a Cliff. comment. Yeah, the Tony Cliff. The, the, no, the creator of the, Delilah the Dunk. Tony Cliff. Tony Cliff. What? <laughs> basketball drama. Uh, oh he asked me a question about the EXP bar. Um, I want to get. I want to talk more about the EXP bar later, but let's just hit this quickly, I guess, because it's Tony Cliff. And what yeah, Tony we can't says, ignore T Cliff. Happens. Yeah, the the Cliffster. The T. Fantastic. The T. Tea leaf, the, the Clifford, the red Tony. Uh, <laughs> he says, EXP bar question. We'll get to that in a sec, but quickly, the EXP bar is that video game bar in Vancouver. Asks, are there actually arcade games there? I hear they had some, but had to take them away because of liquor laws, and the answer is tragic. We were told yes. that, uh, yeah, it's it's gambling if they have uh, video games in a place where they serve drinks. So Due to archaic law in <laughs> Vancouver, and similarly in Toronto, but I don't know if it's as a grievous or whatever, um, if you have, like, I don't know if it's about numbers, if it's more than two or something like that, but if you have video games and alcohol in the same room, it is gambling. Gambling. Oh, the children. Anyway, that's the case. Um, I don't have all the you know Vancouver liquor laws down on a notepad, so I'm not sure what the deal is, but I know a similar issue came up in Toronto with um, the Pinball Arcade, Pinball Cafe, that was out west on Queen Street, and I think they oh, got hit really? bad because they had like six pinball machines and then they had a liquor license, and if you have, I think if you have more than two pinball machines and liquor, it will create gang activity. Yeah, so, you know those kids and their pinball. Those those kids and their pinball games, man. I, I saw that Transformers game. It was way too flashy, and it, that would start a riot. Heaven forbid. Um, so that's the situation we're in right now, and this is why we ourselves may not have, even though we have all these board game cafes popping up around Toronto, um, we may not have a video game one anytime soon because these laws are... There's a lot of archaic laws that are still biting us. Even the uh, the food cart laws in Toronto are way out of. We the, we uh, I'm know. so disappointed. There were so many just walking around downtown Vancouver. There was like Australian pies. There was okonomiyaki on the road. There were food, on the I didn't road. actually see any food carts in Vancouver. Yeah, well, we walked around the downtown to get to the water and just through the business sections, and it was just oh, that been tacos that, yeah. and and pad thai and like Indian food and just. Yeah. A a variety. See, and you guys in the States all are all moaning. <laughs> You're moaning that you don't have your arrow bars in the States. You guys have food trucks everywhere. San Francisco has rotisserie chicken spinning that, off the that block. Being said, though, I know we are getting better because I keep finding the trucks that come to certain locations for like yeah. the, un the underground food market, but like I don't know if they're doing that under the table. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, no, no. It's legit, but it's like... It's called the underground I, food market, though. It's I, I don't know what the laws are myself yet either. There's just a main thing where it's just like hot dogs, burgers, and fries are kind of it. I'm going to come up with the water. I'll be right back. Sure. Um, <laughs> oh, man. That was just a good shot. Um, <laughs> so like food, food carts and trucks, like the, the carts would be mostly just hot dogs, burgers, and fries are kind of like the base of it. Where else you go to New York and you're getting like tzatziki <sighs> sauce on stuff and shawarmas and things like that off the street. We're getting better. Um, we do have a lot of trucks now that show up around, like, you know, more business -y, uh or university-type areas, like uh, Liberty Village, where you have, like, poutine trucks and things like that. And a lot of the shops are now getting their equivalent trucks that show up for sports venues. 
Don't know if the regulations have to do with more of lane space because some of those American cities do definitely have more lanes. You know, like in San Francisco or L.A., we saw like six-lane roads, so one could be taken up with a food truck and no one would say it either way. Where else in Toronto, if there is an ice cream truck during rush hour, then the whole city falls apart. Um, I'll save. Uh, let's see if there's anything else going on in the chat. Because you do definitely, there's so much to talk about with Bandcap. I feel like they'll be answering questions this whole time. And I'm happy to do that. Uh, going back to the rescuers, I don't know if I should wait for Kay to come back for this. You know, let's see what Sarah has to say here. Um, I think, so Sarah, that's when Disney started using the Xerox on cells. Okay, we're all going back to the rescuers. Let's, 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 days of the future past this, kids. Let's, send, let's go back in time to fix this. Um, so apparently, if Katie's here, okay. Hmm? Sarah says apparently that's when, we're going back to the rescuers, that's when they're using Xerox on cells. Yeah, that's when they first um, found out ways to budget a bit. So they were, I think, co- 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 started being used, so. <laughs> um, we got Ariel. <laughs> What'd and she say? It showed. It did show that they knew, they went Hanna-Barbera on that. They uh, and um, once again, I'll never work for Disney. <laughs> No, like, what, if they want the budget, wouldn't it be awesome if Frozen just had the same 3D tree background just tiling again and again as they're, like, running or something like that? It's just, like... Tech, well, technically, they probably did. There's probably just one tree they wrote to. <laughs> I think it's easy degrees. to just generate, though, but, I mean... Yeah, yeah. You go for uh, good composition. Ariel Chan saying, I didn't watch the first Rescuers until after I watched Down Under. Ooh. I love Down Under as a Down kid. Under's one of the... Is Down, one, Down Under is still a really pretty movie. Like, when they're on that chandelier, it is a gorgeous shot. eating the shot. pea soup. It's, it's colored so well, and it's it's, so... the cup is just perfect and shiny. Anyway, uh, which I loved Down Under, but yeah, Rescuers Down Under was definitely so much better than the first. What also had John Candy in it? You can't fight that. He's so good in that. You know what's funny, though? Like, I, I know um, that probably animation buffs would super argue <laughs> with that too. Like I think from a, maybe from well it's kind of like I don't really like the Jungle Book very much but everybody who like the super animation people are like the Jungle Book is the best Disney movie ever and I'm like shit. <laughs> it's <laughs> kind of boring. But it's like what are you talking about? So I, but well, like, there, there was definitely in those <clears throat> mid-Disney things like Sword in the Stone and Jungle Book it was a lot of the story arc was kind of like a series of things happening where one character love, is dragging love, love, the next love, love, character through it. So you got like Blue dragging Mowgli around to do stuff. Then you have Merlin dragging Ward around to do stuff. Yeah, it turns into like, a squirrel. Yeah, but like a, a lot of the pace of those movies were like that. It was kind of like there's like three or four sequences that one character is leading another character through. And I feel that's kind of what Jungle Book was like too. Mm-hmm. But I haven't seen it in years, so I don't know. Yeah. That's fine. Whatever. Technically great stuff, but I mean, again. Oh, good. But I will, I will put it on record. Rescuers Down Under. Much better film. Done. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. John Candy's in it, for God's sake. I do. Like um, we got Chelsea also saying they did the Xeroxing to make movies faster that way. And they also did crazy, you know, reuse of animation. There's uh, sequences that are verbatim from, like, the Aristocats that are used in uh, Robin Hood. Yeah. There's, like, a dance sequence. I think Robin Hood was mostly uh, reused from Sword in the Stone and uh, Aristocats, and there's a bunch of stuff you'll find. Yeah, yeah. But hey, if you're able to like call it a remix, it's a Disney remix, I tell you. Why not? Yeah, even like the interesting reuse of character design, like Blue as well as Little John are basically the same. Were they the same voice as well? Or <laughs> was it like the same? Guy? Uh, yeah, same actor. Yeah, well, I love his voice though. He's fun. Look for the bird, you know. And now it's John. Uh, no, what's his name? Little John. John. I don't know who who plays is like who plays. Oh, uh, um, the uh, new Jungle Book. It was what's his face from Monsters Inc. Um, yeah, it's um, what's his name from Big Lebowski. You know what's his face from Jerry, who's the guy from, from Big Lebowski? Yeah. Like not Jeff Bridges. Um, the that guy man. from Roseanne. <laughs> what's his face from? That Kevin John Smith Goodman. Movie. John, John Goodman. Goodman. I love so that man. Like, I feel bad. Oh, no, he's he's John Goodman awesome. is so good. In Monsters Inc., it is a fantastic role. So good. It's getting really warm in here. It's summer in Toronto now for some reason. We come back. Yeah, we came back and it was sweltering. Was Tony also that. with four votes saying Sarah says hi. Hi Sarah. You guys, you're the best. And we're sorry we kind of didn't see you guys on the last day after. Yeah. Birthday. Because we went to the EXP bar. Da, 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 da. Well, okay, we didn't do that instead. We went to the XP bar for dinner. We were planning to eat dinner and then go to the after party. Yes. But then the plague took over. <laughs> um, 
And I, I'm gonna have to do like a Tumblr post or something about this because the XP bar. Now, you know, let, let's all let's let's not bury the lead. There were no playable games there because of Vancouver's archaic liquor license laws and stuff like that. Um, what they did have though was a ton of like visual paraphernalia all around. There's like Mario tiles. There was friggin' Metal Gear paintings. There was Sephiroths and you know oh, summons Sephiroth. and you know the bathroom was covered in you know, Assassin's Creed art and stuff like that and things like that. It's just like there was there stuff everywhere, all for the eyes to see. I'll post all these. Um, every item on the menu was themed and named, and uh, a bunch of us <laughs> actually got... And, and crazy expensive, don't get me wrong, that place will rob Holy you. Holy crap, we Goodness. had an amazing time, but we saw the bill at the end, we were like... We had a really good time. We had a <laughs> really good time. Looking at the bill at the end. Yes. Um, the point is, though, <laughs> there's, every one of the drinks was fan-friggin-delicious. So if you're into the sweet drinks, which is me... You know, right now I got some raspberry, whatever going on here. Um, this is your place. You know, the Pikachu drink, fantastic. The portal, portal sh shots, oh. One is blue with orange whipped cream, and one is orange with blue whipped cream, and they're both different flavors. Fan freaking fantastic. Like that all the drinks. I don't think there's much alcohol in any of that. No, I was there were delicious drinks, but the I think like we had a lot and yeah. didn't feel a buzz. No. So maybe this little. isn't the best advertising. But okay. if but you like, if you like to watch is, people play League... <laughs> League of Legends. If you like watching nerdy kids far away if, if play League of Legends... you like to sit in a bar eat, and listen to remixes of Final Fantasy and... Yeah, Chrono like Trigger Kirby, Dub, and Snap, Cross. And, and... Oh man, it's a time. It, it, was, it was a place. And let me, let me tell you, uh, most of us ordered the... Uh, I, it's not called the Pulled Ganondorf. It's the Ganondorf. It's like the Ganondorf pulled pork or the Ganondorf no, pork sandwich. It's the, it's the Ganon pork. Ganon pork. Okay. Sandwich. So it's not a pulled Ganondorf. Okay. No, it's a Ganon, Ganon pork sandwich, and it was really good because it's like a pulled pork with a deep fried avocado in the middle. I assume that's Link inside Ganondorf's like grass. Mm -hmm. I just thought of this now. I didn't think of it at the time. I wasn't smart enough. So a lot I'm of levels. What it is. A lot of levels. A lot of puns. The starter menu is a start menu. Get it? Get it? Mm -hmm. Uh. There's multiplayer menu, which is like the nachos you share with each other. You know what I'm saying? Is there what's happening there? Is there what's happening there? Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was just, you know, I, it was fun. Uh, you, you don't go alone and be like, I'm going to have a good time. You know, no. You want to go with a crowd of people who <laughs> like the video games and the nostalgia and looking at the art and the toys, and you guys won't shut up about Smash Bros. You get way into it. That's what it, that's what it was about. So, yeah. Fully enjoyed the experience. And I think this ties into what Courtney was saying. Voted up with six points. Currently, Courtney is winning the episode. You guys better catch up. Uh, she says, hey, guys, says Courtney Lund. I really missed you at Anime North. Uh, what did you guys get from the EXP bar? It looked delicious. And how awesome is that bar? Yes, it was both fantastic and delicious. Kokiriko Village Chicken, which I believe <laughs> is uh, Link's hometown chicken. Yeah. Though there wasn't any chickens in the Kokiri... Wait, which village It is it? Kokiriko, right? Or is Kokiriko... Well, the Kokiri, Kokiri was where the Kokiri Forest kids were. is where the elves are. the town so had the chickens, then that would make sense. The town, yeah, yeah, with the chickens. So that makes sense. To me. Yeah. I'm not so angry. I ate those chickens. <laughs> there would be cuckoos or something like that, or cocos, cuckoos, cuckoos, cuckoos. Um, I took photos of like every menu item. I'm not going to read them all out, but I'll just see if there's anything interesting for you lot to check. Oh man, just look at all. Yeah, yeah. Look at all these drinks and the like coins and stuff. Here, there was like a street, a puzzle fighter, like super puzzle fighter machine, but it wasn't on. Of course. Aww. You're in your laws, Vancouver. Okay, so this is my list, at least what I had. So I had the Thundaga 3, which was a drink, the Ganon Pork Sandwich with the Caesar, uh, hmm. the Portal Gun, which was the two shots, you know, the Pikachu's Revenge, and the Fairy Fountain. And the Thundaga was a drink that had Pop Rocks all around it, which is kind of cool because the Pop Rocks oh, got fun. the condensation that became gooey, and then you could just lick the cup. Yeah, they were, they were, the, the meal was very tasty. My, my Kokiriko chicken was delicious. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah, I'll top it off, the Ganon pork, or the pulled Ganon, whatever you want to call it, had, it was pulled pork, deep fried avocado, and also had nacho chips, which are Triforces, which are triangles. Oh! You know what I'm saying? You get it? This oh, place gosh. is clever. Yeah. This place is too clever for casual dining. <laughs> the EXP lounge, the EXP bar. That's my, that's my quote for them. I like it. All right, here's Pikachu's Revenge. There you go. Little, uh, little color Pikachu. Here's the uh, portal shots. You got yeah, some uh, nice, nice, nice. 
Uh, I think this was the, the the fairy fountain of youth. And they also had like um, Nuka. Oh, like, I oh. had um. What did I have? HP and mana. It was like uh, <laughs> mana and. You want to get your, your health up because you're like health. dying at that like, point. I was like, I'm sick. I need health. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, I, need, I almost need a phoenix down. You also had like what chocolate chocolate finishing slice like for dessert. That's like your last. I wanted minute, I dessert, guess. but I was full. There was a force battle drink where you choose two lightsabers and then they drop them in a glass full of pop rocks. It was like banana lightsaber. Dang. Yeah, there's a Hadouken. The Cherry Blossom, Shura, the Sky Fallen, lots of stuff. I'm not going to read off the whole list. There was but. an arrow to the knee. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, we have Molly saying, Kokiriko Village is the Sheikah town at the bottom of the mountain. Kokiri yeah. Forest is where Little Link lives, but Kokiriko is known for the Kokus, the chickens. So yeah, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Thanks, Molly. Yeah, yeah. Wish they didn't name everything all the same. It's fantasy. It's <laughs> like Tolkien. <laughs> yeah, Tolkien with his Aerith Thorn and Jaraborn and it's how, it's how you knew everybody was from the same place. They all yeah, have all a dumb name. Great. <laughs> uh, what was the name of the bargains? Is J A Staple? It's the EXP Bar. Woo! Vancouver, and there will never be one in Toronto. The best you guys can get is A and C World, which is kind of like a, a little arcade land place, but there's no food or drinks. We were drinking at that place in Seattle. Um, not that this is the drinking show, but like when we went to that video game place after Emerald City Comic Con, like there was you could get a beer and go play stuff. Oh no, games. you're 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 talking about um, uh, GameWorks. Yeah. Okay, so here's the difference. Um, in Toronto, we do still have, or in Mississauga, technically, the Palladium, the Sega. Well, I don't know if it's still Sega Palladium, but it's basically if you have GameWorks in your city, it's basically you know, a big stupid arcade place that you get the swipey cards and you play your time crisis and stuff. But upstairs there is a bar and restaurant, but I don't think you're allowed to bring the alcohol downstairs. Okay. Oh, well, that was it. Game yeah. works. You can walk around double fisting beers yeah. and go to your <laughs> Rambo <laughs> game with this machine gun and a beer, and you're like, ah! And it's like a time. So if you're going to Pax, Pax Prime, make sure to do that. Go on the Thursday when it's like unlimited. Uh, we got Andrew Murray asking, Shaggy, will you be attending Animatic TO tomorrow? XOXO, Andrew. Oh, yes. That's tomorrow. That is tomorrow. I have to double check. I haven't planned anything yes. since getting back. I've been kind of lost to the world. I'm not sure yet. Um, but if you guys are in town, do check out Animatic TO. Um, who, who's the guest this time? Do you know? I think or? it's um, Ricardo Curtis of House of Cool Ooh. Studios. Um, cool stuff. I think Ricardo worked on like the Iron Giant and some cool Pixar stuff, and then he came back to Toronto to run his own studio, which you can listen to, actually, on an episode of Guys with Pencils, which was a very fascinating watch. Um, and in it, he talks about something I always found really interesting about how, um, in the States, uh, the Canadian animation versus American animation, um, I'm kind of boiling it down way too much, but in Canada, we have a lot of tax credit and subsidies, um, which you think would make people take more risks because you have more of a safety net, but people don't. No, and don't want to lose that safety net. Yeah, so they and don't in take the, the states, risk. it's like it's do or die, so that's where more of the interesting... They try to catch an audience any way they can. Universe. Yeah, that's where yeah. stuff will come out that's like, whoa, this is totally unique. So, I mean, that was kind of an interesting and sobering thing. But yeah. not to say you can't come up with like totally unique fun stuff in Canada, but it just... It, just, it won't be funded, so there you go. <laughs> it's it's maybe it's harder to do it, but it's possible, because, I mean... Um, Creative, creative people come from all over the place, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you know, yeah. So, I don't know. <clears throat> Go to that and learn more. We got Ariel Tran saying, going back to John Goodman. The first movie I seen heard John Goodman outside of Monsters, Inc. and Emperor's New Groove was The Big Lebowski. That threw me yeah. for a loop. <laughs> I haven't seen The Big Lebowski, but I saw the He-Man version of it. With all those quotes, so that threw me as yeah. well. Seeing there you He-Man go. Say it. It's fun. So, look up The Big Hebowski. It's great. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah. It's so good. Uh, we got Creepy Porpoise saying, Guess the West Coast is the place to go for stuff. Ground control in Portland is pretty great, although incredibly crowded all the time. You gotta go during the Ooh, day. Yeah, we've been there. No one's there. I was like, me and Pinball. I played... I played, I played so much Pac-Man. Oh. I played this never-ending game of Frogger, because every time I died, I kept coming back. I'm like, why won't this ever end? <laughs> Frogger, I hate you. It felt great. Yeah, sure it did. Ground control is really great. Got your if you're in Portland... Worth. 
Because that's it. We don't have the barcade. Like, in Toronto, I don't know if, if the law is in place, but we have, like, maybe, like, a deer hunting game in every bar, and that's, like, it's. Like, maybe there's a fighting game machine, but it's only just, like, one or two, and it might be a part of that law. Yeah. And some bars even have the stupid gambling game on the counter. That's not actually gambling, but it is, but it isn't. It's like, vote. Who's, uh, what's a deer look like? It's like, all right, I hate this bar. Oh, you win. <laughs> oh, you're the gambling king. Uh, you two were very kind, says Heather, as I shouted. And Van Calf, uh, totally excellent. Thanks oh, thank you. There. It was great to meet you. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> we were hoping to come back possibly next year if, if we can. Stel's just saying, I was at Van Calf. Wish I had been tabling. Sad face. Next year. There's always next year. Go for it. Uh, Chelsea also saying, I remember going to the States and getting peanut butter Oreos. They were the best Ooh. damn thing. You can good. also get, like, green tea Oreos, like, imported from, like... You always remember your first weird thing. I remember being in um, college and going over with some friends, and it was mint Skittles. <laughs> it was, like, mint Skittles. They were gross, but I was like, oh, you can't get these again. <laughs> I really liked them. They were nice. Eh. What's, wrong, what's wrong with the mint Skittles? You can have what? one. You can you have still one. have them? No, I gave them to All you. those years ago? <laughs> hey, be... They sit on my shelf and I just glare at them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got a couple more chats here, of course. We got Matthew saying, sorry to hear that. I'm not sure what that's a reference to me. My luggage, you getting sick. Get well soon, Katie. I also had my luggage lost lots of times. And I could only wear the clothes I was wearing on the plane, needless to say. Nah. Usually they find it within the day. And it's usually either on the plane behind you or the plane the next morning. Yeah. Or for some weird reason, it got there before you. I don't know. It's like usually yeah, when there's stopovers, it makes sense. When it's one plane, it's kind of. Yeah, I don't know. Ariel Chan saying, Will you guys ever come back to table at C2E2? Gosh, I had a really fun time in Chicago. Um, you know, a weird thing. However. Like I was, however. <laughs> no, a weird thing is actually I was looking at our um, cons to see, you know, because it's, it's, we, we had fun trying a bunch, but now it's kind of like we kind of have to maybe. Um, shrink our traveling a bit and focus more on like the cons we do best at and C2E2 is like our third best convention. Oh, really? Yeah, it was like TCAP, VanCAF, C2E2 and I was like, really? That's interesting. C2E2 had a really big artist alley though. Like they they had like we basically dominated like the whole back half of the con. It was like Yeah. And it was it was a nice venue too and as, and I will attest to this, it has the best con pizza I've ever had in my life. Yeah, it really was good. It's Chicago food. pizza at a convention. We're used to the cardboard that you're trapped with for seven dollars. For like five, they had real pizza. Yeah, Fan Expo, it's like they give you a drawing of a pizza. And go ha. Hey. Lucky. Pour some ketchup on that. Well, you try to the face. try to leave Fan Expo. They don't let you back in. Jeez. Jeez. I don't know, man. Don't know. Uh, well, I'm sure you'll have a great time, Molly. <laughs> when you oh yeah, enjoy Fan it. Expo. Just don't go. <laughs> just don't leave. Just don't. Well, she's exhibiting. <laughs> Bring a pack lunch. Never leave. You're trapped. Bring, You're trapped. bring healthy foods. Bring your cucumbers. We got Chelsea saying, Oh, Morgan's my classmate. Eponosa. Oh, oh wait, kidding. that's about the comics we were talking about. And all the characters were based off of various classmates. Oh, nice. So we're going to some behind the scenes. Yeah, the Morgan was really sweet. She came up to um, meet us at TCAF and gave uh, me comics. And then she came to Van Calf and gave you comics. Yeah. So both sides of the country. She showed us. She showed them earlier here. So there we go. Lots of yeah. nice little books here. Oh yeah, and then the, and the crew. Uh, what were what were their names? Uh, it, they they rhymed. It was um like Bevan and Evan. Uh yeah, there's Bevan and Eben. Yeah, Bevan and Eben. <laughs> there you go, Morgan, Bevan, and Eben. So check those guys out. Yeah, it looks really Morgan's great. Work here. I'm just uh, gonna do a quick plug too. Um, uh, I was mentioning Madeline Flores earlier. Um, she has this really. I really enjoyed her uh, printed version of. Bear, Bird, and Stag were arguing in the forest and other stories, and she's just got such fun art. I'll give this to you. I think you'll really enjoy it. Um, just cool. really, really great, goofy, fun stuff. There's this one drawing that just killed me. I don't know. It's all little animals. I think I'm finally, like, reading all the stuff from the very beginning. Like, of the like just, this, this deer is just really funny. <laughs> There's really funny expressions. <laughs> Really good. Excellent. But hopefully, get the full version. I'll check that out. Yeah. Um, Melissa raising hand, being from Van Calf. I think yeah, we're like at the bottom now. We're catching up to like all the chat for the oh, next episode. So Melissa was at Van Calf. So hi, Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Um, we got Terrell saying hello, Shannon siblings. Sorry I'm late. Uh, I was great seeing you at Van Calf again this year. Hi, TV dinner. 
<laughs> yeah, I think these were posted way early, though, so I'm like just trying to catch up with those. Uh, Vancouver says Chelsea also has a tabletop themed bar. We will try that we next wanted, time. We wanted to check out. We heard it looks like a medieval pub and it has like actual. Oh, that's the one. Yeah. It was, it was called like the Sorcerer's Biscuit or oh, something like that. I don't know. The Sorcerer's like Biscuit. I would call it that. In fact, I'm taking that name. Where's my pen? I have no pens. In the meanwhile, while I search for pens, uh, we also have who's saying things? Molly saying since I live right by the border. Oh, now we're in the pop tart talk again. Molly saying since I live right by the border, I'll go find you some exquisite pop tarts and bring oh, them for you when I come to Toronto in August. Thank you Molly, for that. We can uh, eat them on the roller coasters. Oh my gosh, we could do that. And Kel is telling Glenn there are like 30 flavors of pop tarts in the world. Nice. And I've only oh, we're, we're reading like backwards, seven. right? This isn't coming up now. On the yeah, chat. no, no I'm, I'm catching up because the chat you assume the oldest is at the bottom, but sometimes stuff shows up in the middle and it gets really confusing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Molly also saying, I don't think I can bring crepe on the plane. Okay, this is old, <laughs> but I can make French crepes. I can come visit you guys and make crepes. Sweet, you can come to our house and be a guest on the show. And Chelsea corrects, it's the Storm Crow Tavern. What did uh, you call it? The Crunchy the Biscuit. No, the Sorcerer's Biscuit. The Sorcerer's Biscuit. <laughs> Which may actually be a Harry Potter reference. Sounds like a Harry Potter reference. Yeah, I'm not going to write it down because I might have been a Harry Potter reference. The Philosopher's so write... Scone? Yeah, I think yeah, I think I heard that before. So I'm not going to write it It's not mine. You guys can take it. It's not mine. But Stormcrow, though. Stormcrow Tavern. So yeah, board games that actually have physical fake money and alcohol is okay. But yeah. video games where you don't even get damn tokens anymore is wrong. Boo. You figure the logic. Toronto. Toronto, Government. your spicy hot weather. Yeah, man, I'm sweating. I already took a shower after coming back from X Men, and now I'm sweating all over again. <laughs> you had a good time in X Men. It was a sweaty <laughs> movie. You get to see Wolverine's butt. <laughs> That's my kind of movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Godzilla was really sweaty too. I don't know what it was, but that theater was warm. Mm. Uh, it's real saying. I'm really hoping a ta- I'm really hoping a table at Van Cap next year. If Sweet. you two were there too, it would make my weekend. Yeah, we hope so. I mean, we, we weren't able to come with Silly Kingdom 2, so yeah. <laughs> when we get this thing finished, we'll have to bring it back out west. That being said, every other year I do miss Anime North, and I'm like, oh. I know. But the I thing is, is, I feel like Anime North was an amazing time in my youth of four years ago. <laughs> um, now it's just bitterness and regret. I feel like if I go back, well, like, because one of the last times I went, I was that person that holds everybody's bags while they take pictures. And I was like, no, I don't want to be the the mom at Anime North anymore, so we all we did call it mom. We called so, it the mule, didn't we? The or mule. Like the I don't carry, want to be the, the pack mule. <laughs> the pack mule. You're the, the pack mule. Stuff. So I found that you have to be in costume, because if you're in a group of people in costume, everyone's going to want to take photos. So you need to have the best costume, so everyone wants yeah. to take your photo, and then they have to hold your gear. Or if you're a cosplayer, you're not allowed to have a purse, because yeah. I will not hold your purse. Yeah. Leave it on the floor. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, I, I think I had a lot of fun when we did a group cosplay last time, so I'd like to do something similar. Oh, we got more pop tart talk. Kel saying, the flavor I brought was called Confetti Cupcake Flavor, and it's advertised as a good source of calcium, which I assume is a lie. Well, if you That's replace like calcium, <sighs> replace calcium with joy. And it will be proper advertising. Do you remember the me, Nutella but... ads? I mean, everyone... Yeah, there was the mom who's like, my children need to swim, but they suck. So I give them Nutella, and then they're in the pool like... <laughs> it's, <laughs> but it's got, like, healthy skim milk and whole, whole grain hazelnuts and, and good for your brain. just a amount of crack cocoa. Oh, it's like, it's chocolate. You're just eating chocolate. <laughs> Paddle, you pots. And he's like... Ah, ah. <laughs> Nutella. I saw a new Nutella commercial that's even worse because it's oh, like... Yeah? I don't know if it's like everyone just loves it so much, but there's like... Kids making like their drawings of Nutella as a kid to put on the fridge, and mom's all proud of it. I'm like, no, no one like as a kid, I didn't draw a craft friggin' dinner and say, mother, put this on the fridge for me, please. I wish yeah, they would be like, uh, we have a problem. I'd be like, my son's a sellout. He's advertising. I don't need this. That yeah. stuff is such BS because I mean, a kid even want, like, unless you're doing it for the jokes, anyone watching is gonna be like, really, you love it so much, mommy? Can we put this on the fridge? Oh, you, like, that's not. I'm assuming that's where the story went because there's a lot of mini stories of like it's the kid's birthday and the mom made like literally a cake with Nutella in the shape of a Nutella jar because <laughs> the kid loves the Nutella so damn much. It's like, are you sure you don't want like you know Barbie or Hulk or one of your favorite characters? It's like, no, I want my favorite product. 
I want I would, Nutella. I would be worried. Cake. <laughs> I'd be so worried. It's what like, do you want for Christmas, Nutella? Yeah, it's like for my son's birthday, he wanted a mayonnaise-shaped bottle cake, and it's like, oh, great. It's like, yeah, oh, you think that was weird. Yeah, I don't know. But then again, who am I? You know, why are we? If yeah, we love our fictional I mean, characters, normal? love your real products. Yeah. They love Superman, you. Superman, <laughs> mayonnaise. I don't know. You love it's what like, you love. Like eat it, sure, but don't. <laughs> it confuses me. We got Sarah also saying, "I have an industry question." Go for it. All right, education. No more funny business. All right. This is a learning show. Okay, we had our jokes and our Nutella. Now it's time to pop tarts. It's time to learn. You guys are here drawing. <laughs> She's asking, I have an industry question. How do you go about charging for storyboards? Is it per page of script, per frame, or a fixed rate, plus extra for modifications? Um, I've never really done it outside of the studios, so usually studios give you a fixed rate of uh, per, per week. Um, but, like, normally it's per episode, so... Um, like, when you work on a on an 11 minute, which is usually when you watch a cartoon and there's like the first half and the second half, like the A Show, B Show, they're like two little short stories. Um, there's like a, fit, a set rate for that. So say you do an 11 minute episode for, I'm going to say like, what's a good starting rate for a 11 minute episode? Well, if you ask questions, I'm going to just unleash this sushi candy for you assemble your... I'm going to say like six grand. And then they will divide that up into weeks so that you... You know, invoice at the half point when you do all the roughs, and then you invoice at the end when you get it all done. Um, really, it depends on the studio. Uh, figure out what your time is worth because boarding is a lot of work. Um, it's it's hard to say what rates to choose because I mean it's like nobody wants to talk about money <laughs> like that where it's like how much do you make? It's like especially well, when, when you're signing contracts. <laughs> um, how much does I mean, need to know? It's important to know. Why, like, why like, do you need to know that? Yeah, like like generally you want to make about. I. Okay, well it's so hard to say. <laughs> what they're talking about on the panel, we had Frank uh, from Becky and Frank. I never mm. mentioned his last name. Do you know his last name? Uh, Gibson. Frank Gibson was on this panel, and we're talking about. It's mostly about artists, or writers. Sorry, about writers mm -hmm. and about writers finding artists. How much do you pay them for page rate? And people are asking, like, what's the standard? And he's like, too low, because for is. the amount of work it comes to color a page, like, even, like two hundred would be like passable if they had well, to. But even that's, that's, that's too low. The, that's the thing with comics. So, like, I love page. I love comics, but to make a living from them, like animation is a lot more. Yeah. Um, reliable and, and much a lot more support supporting, uh, like because sometimes it's like comics, it's like a hundred to. I remember reading somewhere that like oh like a professional will make three hundred a page for pencils, but then people are like nah, they don't even make that. Yeah, because there's also a colorist and inker, and they all have to get the same part of the pie, so they're going to knock yeah. you down. Like he was saying, well, is it like twenty five for a written page? I know writing is a lot faster, and you don't have to like you know, draw. I think it was like per written page you get twenty five bucks, but like for art, you're lucky to get like three hundred for just a drawn page. Like I'm not even talking about inking and coloring, like it because there's there's really no standard. That's just it. There's no body of like it's kind of whatever law. you get, but like basically it's almost like I everyone mean, creates the standard. Because if if one artist declines that job, another may take it, and then that becomes the standard. So like it's the same thing with the the VFX world. Yeah, no, that's true. And like, if you take a lower price, it's it's kind of that thing where people say they'll work for free. You're setting a bad precedent because it's like, oh, I'll do this for less, but then this other person's like, I can do it for less, and then everybody's undercutting, and then you're hurting when, the industry. As, when everyone undercuts, it kills the industry because yeah. it devalues the work. And, and the thing becomes... is, yeah, and in, in Toronto, we don't really have an animation guild that regulates that, but in the States, there is a guild, but I don't know how much they moderate because I don't know if it's the same as... It sounds like there's a union in the States. It sounds like there's an animation union to make sure you're getting the minimum, like, your fair due. But, I mean, here you kind of have to make sure you just keep an eye on it and watch out for yourself. And um, I, I would say, like, what is a day of your time worth? Um, like, like, figure out how, how long it would take you to work on a project. What is the minimal you'll work per hour? Like, I forget exactly what the number was, but... I was asked a question where someone was offered like 500 bucks to do a board job, and it's like when you broke it down, you were making like 
thirty cents an hour almost for the work, and it's like it would be better off working at some minimum wage job and doing your own work on the side than taking on this for exposure. Like that stuff is just ridiculous. Um, well, but but figure figure out like yeah what what a day of your time is worth and yeah. you know yeah add add room for revisions because you don't want to just be stuck in revision hell where oh but you said you would do this board for fifteen hundred and uh, I'm not happy with it yet so you have to keep doing revisions and revisions and revisions um, as I said I'm used to working in a studio so I'm not sure what it's like working with individuals but usually studios have set rates and you can negotiate like you can always ask for more you can always negotiate and if, like. Um, worst that happens is they say no, and if you're not happy with the deal, you can always walk away. It's tricky, uh, like you even saying, like it being based on how many pages of script you adapted, because one page of script and versus another may have a whole whack of different shots. Well, that's so true. One could just be like a wide shot and two characters talking, versus another page of script can have like people, no, and five people throwing things and cars and stuff, and that's the same amount of visual adaptation. You know, it's here's yeah. a screen of text, here's a screen of text. But this one requires so many more drawings than that no, that's, one. That's true, and that's that's tough for a board artist. Imagine an animator if you're working frame rate. You know, you're making so much so much money per frame. Doesn't matter if it's one character close up head talking, or like a circus with everybody performing in yeah. a wide shot. Like you're making like a this new frame. fucking sequence or something. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I mean, this is why good... we need the Xerox. Thank you, Disney. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like a good animation supervisor will make sure it's fair. That it's it's all laid out fair, so you know you can make your quota and make a decent amount of wage <laughs> and everything. Um, but yeah, I it's it's hard for me to say you should ask for just X amount. Like, I think there might be a follow up from Sarah saying I got asked that question from a live action film person, so I don't really know what either because it's less detailed to know for that mm -hmm. either. I guess yeah, it's it's because like the storyboarding if. If you want to break it down, like if you want to break it down, how much would you want to make a year? If you aim that you want to make like 52 or whatever a year, then you break that down to your day rate. Mm -hmm. And what's your what? So you're either gonna try to fight for a day rate where it's like I want to make 200 a day, but then you have to budget that against your time. Like how many days does it yeah. take to do a scene of a board? Yeah. Can you do this many pages a day, or do you want to budget down to how many pages you draw? It's it's kind of like those are like I'm I'm hoping not confusing because I don't have the science either. But yeah. if you go day rates. Then you have to figure out how many days it takes to do that scene versus like you know I I have to do more days because I ran out of time. But then like you're lying mm -hmm. because you promised you do it in five days and they agreed to two hundred a day, but it's going to take you seven days. Now you're basically going to have to like do nights as well to make up for that, mm -hmm. you know. But if you don't know how complex the script is, like I don't know if you can make that call of day rate or not. You know I don't know. Yeah, it's <laughs> tricky, and you probably have to agree to a rate before you even look at the script, which makes it really tricky. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is weird. It's one of those things where you have to sign up to be on a show before you even know what the show's about. Like, I'd almost yeah, prefer, yeah. can I look at the script before I say yes? <laughs> to be like, yeah, do I you want know, to work on this? Do you, don't, you don't get a choice. Yeah. Actors and directors actor, get to do that. <laughs> yeah, as an actor, you don't sign up and say like, yes. Go on it or not. We and then they show you. About. Yeah, exactly. I can't tell you what it's about, but you have to sign up, and then you get the script, and you're like, "Oh God, like I have to do this." No, you, you get to look it over. But I mean, I I think if you were top of your game as a board artist, maybe you could. No, I don't. I don't think so. I think you'd still <laughs> just. All right, you signed up. Here's the script. Maybe uh, I'm wrong. If someone else knows, they can explain it. Terrell's going back to saying, "I love Frank's advice about building an audience before going to a publisher. It makes me feel like uh, I made the right decision putting." Uh, Imigo online. Uh, I want to get to that in a yeah. sec about the audience. That's more about comics. I want to quickly address some Andrew said. He says, uh, I just invoice at the end. I've never invoiced after uh, oh, yeah. I've never invoiced after roughs. I am a moron. I, yeah, <laughs> you should invoice because otherwise you're waiting for that paycheck and then if they're late paying you, you're waiting forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When so I'm doing a 22 uh, minute, I invoice three times. Yeah, yeah. Just boop, boop, boop. <laughs> All right, so uh, I want to quickly go into uh, what Terrell was asking about, or talking about here. Uh, so the, the panel we went to, uh, there's also some new Tele talk, which I'd like to get back to for a second. Don't go uh, back to Nutella. <laughs> we, we, we must always return to Nutella. And uh, someone's talking about Stormcrow. We'll get to that in a sec, too. Um, the, the panel was basically more, it was more about writing, but whenever you go to a panel about writing for comics, it always comes down to, how do you get at the artists? You know, because that's the biggest question. I, I was hoping... The elusive you, artist. Yeah, that, that's always kind of the thing everyone's kind of pursuing and want to find out more information. Did everyone delete their Nutella questions? No, don't delete them. We're gone? cheating. I want to ask this. Okay, well, I want to all the Nutella questions. Put just them back in there. <laughs> okay. Um, and the point was basically, 
Um, what Frank was saying, which is really interesting to me, is when it comes to pitching, talking about comic pitches, it seems pitches aren't exactly the thing to do anymore, which is may, maybe not 100% uh, the angle we're going for with this uh, point. But it's saying, basically, if, if you want your comic made, you don't just come to a publisher. You know, we, we, We've talked about before but that, basically, if you pitch, you have to have a finished comic. Basically. Yeah. Well, we talked about That's, that. I remember our first year at San Diego, Kazoo Tool is that were... Yeah. Um, you basically, it, it, at, least, at the yeah. very least, has to all be pencils. <laughs> you need, like, you pretty much need a finished book, unless you, because you're, you're proving yourself at this point, you know, you have to have that finished product. After that, you can be like, mm, it's going to be about this and this, because you've proven you can make something. But that first yeah. project, if you're coming in cold, you kind of need it to be, you do, you need it to be finished product. Well, and for a lot of people, that is the stuff they do on the side. That is your online webcomic. That's the book yeah. you self-published. You go up to a company with that and go, I can do this. Uh, I would like to work with you at some point. This is what I can do. Yeah, yeah. And like, the, the, yeah. the point from that being, it's like, you you either, if you're doing a pitch, you're coming to them with basically a finished product and whether they want to sell it or not. But if you're coming to anyone with just the idea, ideas are a dime a dozen, why should anyone draw your idea? Um, you can even, like, pitch an idea to a studio, they reject it, and you go off and make it on your own, and then they want it then. And it's mm -hmm. not a hypocrisy thing. It's basically you've proven it now versus you saying you can do it now. You were untested, yeah. And for some reason, just comics seems to be more about they want final. Like, there's some other industries that will go on a pitch, like perhaps TV and... Um, yeah. But it's almost... The thing he was saying more, though, is kind of like you want to do your own thing anyway, not necessarily for that thing to be your end product, but for people to see that you're a regular, you do this, you have a following, you have an audience, and then they'll offer like something else to you, not necessarily take on your that product, because they want to kind of have you know their own original thing, or they were like, can you pitch something else to us that will be the thing we made? You know, maybe it's an image thing where it's like they don't want to be the guys who just bought your webcomic. They want to be the company that released your newest work kind of thing. Yeah. I, I'm just kind of throwing it out there and guessing on that. But the idea being the, the dream project you have most likely won't be published by the studio. That will be for your web audience and you, and that's what builds you up as you know a reliable creator and is your resume, essentially. And then the job that will be the studio is when they come to you from seeing this, which is nothing you can predict. Someone finding you is not the most predictable, you know, secure business venture. No. But the idea being, once you get into that circle, then it's kind of your reputation is what gets you job to job to job. So it's like, oh, he's the guy who did this for them. Maybe he could do this for us. Now, I'm not saying don't pitch, because I've been to like enough of these, you know, pitch panels and things like that. That it's still people are still doing that. But it's just like, if you are pitching, you basically have to be ready to go. You have to be like, this is ready to print tomorrow. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. uh, now they, they still decide that their editors want to have input and stuff too. So that's why I'm kind of like, how complete does it have to be? Because don't their editors want to have some influence? Be like, why isn't he wearing a backwards hat instead? You know. So you have to read <laughs> the whole damn thing. You know, because because you know, no company wants to do things alone. They want to be involved. You know, it, it's everyone working together to make something versus let that guy make. Them. Sometimes they have that versus let that guy do whatever. But you know, mm -hmm. everyone wants to have a say because they want to be involved in the process. So in the end, there's no guarantees. That's the the final thought of this all is nothing is a guarantee, of course. Yeah. But don't save your best ideas for some future studio project. Put it out there now and come up with a better idea later. Like show that it's not just a one hit wonder. If you have this amazing idea, do it. Freaking do it now. Like what are you saving it up for? Because by the time you save it up, someone else is going to have a very similar idea anyway. That's happened a hundred times to me. Things I've written as a kid and stored away forever. I've seen or heard stuff that I'm like, oh, that's what I was gonna do, and yeah, I didn't yeah. do something with it. So I have no no stake on it. It's like it's dead. I can I can release it now, but people will be like, oh, that's like what happened in Frozen or something like that. I'm like, eh, wrote it first. I swear I did. <laughs> 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 Proof is in pudding. So make some pudding or make your comic. There, done. <clears throat> For example, I'm gonna now make a gummy sushi using my gummy rice oh, and no. this gummy yellow stuff. And I put that on top, and now it's, it's sushi. Fun. Think about it. <laughs> Comics. Think about it. <laughs> uh, we got tech support saying, back from taking the puppy for a walk. Aww. So put in one for a walk. For you. Uh, Sarah is thanking you for the helpful tips. Yeah, no problem. Helpful, it's helpful. I hope it's, helpful. Like, it's kind of those things where it's like, a yeah, it's like... Well, I make this much. It's like I don't want to, but like you have to find out what, what, like figure out what your time is worth. Yeah. 
and, and, and don't and don't go back you, on. You don't want to undersell yourself. Sometimes you do have to take a hit to get a the job. Works, I the know it's gonna be hard though. Like um, so, you don't want to. Yeah. But it's it's kind of a thing too where it's like your first one. Do you take the hit on the first one? Like sometimes I guess you gotta. But isn't that like the spend night? Avoid it if you can. If you take no job out of this, like none of them pay enough, then it's almost like you'll never get into. The well, RP. yeah, and I mean when you're starting out, you take what you can get, for yeah. sure. Get your foot in the door and show you can work hard. But I mean, you want to also watch out that you're not being taken advantage of. Hmm. Um, going back to Nutella. Oh no. <laughs> Andrew says, if someone offers you some Nutella, don't take it. You know they have put their finger in there. Ew. Now to add some perspective on that, um, I wouldn't do the finger with the Nutella. I had a spoon because I want to get lots of Nutella. <laughs> I ate it like ice cream. Yeah, we we. I'm glad I haven't had it in years. It was my and... personal jar. Else well, we would make s'mores in the microwave. <laughs> oh yeah, that was the past. What about like last month? Huh? <laughs> Jeez. Okay, no more Nutella talk. We're done with this healthy... Delete snack. your comments. <laughs> uh, we got Creepy Porpoise saying, forgive me if someone has already asked, but are you guys going to be going to Con Bravo this year? Um, I don't think so. Um, I Con really, Bravo... I, it's, it's, it's a shame because I really, I really like the people that run it, and I've enjoyed being there in the past, but we always go away for San Diego, yeah. and I always get sick when I come back. <laughs> From a trip. We're usually so, landing on the weekend of. Yeah, it's like we come back on the Friday and then it's Con Bravo. And then last time I had to skip it because I just got Con Bleg again. So, I don't know. Unless somebody I like wants to. There's really a lot of good guys. Like friggin' um, John Tron. Friggin' uh, Did You Know Gaming is going to be there. Like, there's a lot of great video game guests there. I'd love to check them out. I'd love to see. But I don't even know if I could see a panel with John Tron if I went. It'd be like some crazy lineups and stuff. Yeah. And like after Comic Con, you don't want to line up for anything. You know? Like I know in Germany and stuff like that, they don't have like lineups, you just run to the front and yell. We've what? been Remember, there's no such thing as a queue, you just gotta like yell you want your schnitzel at the gas station and well, maybe whoever at has the their gas hand station. up. Yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, I, but, I found the polite Canadians were starving. <laughs> yeah, we're like, oh, I, oh, she was. Like, oh, um, I, I, uh, and like, oh, you gotta, somebody yeah. will feed me. But at Comic Con, you gotta line up for everything, and so after doing that for like four hours for a panel, you just don't want to get into a line ever again for a year until the next Comic Con. Yeah, I need so, to build up my resistance for a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got Melissa also saying, I completely forgot to ask you to this when you were hanging out at VanCaf, but what is your process yeah, yeah. for the two of you writing and drawing a comic? All right, no more Nutella talk. This is serious. <laughs> no more jokes. This is this is work. Uh, the writing, creative process, right? The writing? Writing. All right. Um, it all starts with a spark of imagination. Okay. <laughs> it first comes down to the project, because it's there's... I'm trying to think, like, most cases we have an anthology offered to us to, like, be a part of, and that's what gets both of us <laughs> Offered to us. Well, no, it's like, would you want to join? It's not like, we, we don't hunt down anthologies and be like, I want to be a part of it. It's like people who know our work and oh, stuff no. like are like, isn't it? Have, have yeah, you hounded yeah, an anthology? No, we've, we've always been invited by lovely yeah. people. Yeah. I'm not saying this as, like, some crazy, like, boastful thing. That's just the way it is. When you put your work out there, uh, people see it and be like, oh, they do good stuff. I'd like to have their work as part of this anthology, and hopefully yeah. you know, they can deliver. So we'll, hopefully they're not super late. <laughs> hopefully they're not schmucks. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope we've proven that we are not schmuckly. <laughs> We're not very schmuckers. Um, but it'd be like, what you know, there's a theme to these anthologies. In the case of the Cautionary Fables and stuff, it's, uh, you know, fairy tales and uh, folklore from various cultures. And so yeah. in that case, both of us will either be digging through websites or hearing or remembering stories we heard as kids and stuff and then like kind of seeing what would be the most step interesting. Step one is topic. research. Yeah, is re in that case is research. Um, so that's that's step one. If it's our own stuff, which to be fair, I guess the only real narrative one we did was Still the Kingdom. That was more of we wanted to make a new comic that wasn't you know, what wasn't our, our web stuff was based on an original property, original we idea. We wanted to make a short story. Yeah. yeah, and I already had a couple written from back in 2005 when I was doing the radio plays, and Silly Kingdom was this radio play series that I completed the first one with the cast and everything and kept writing others, but those ones just didn't come about to the scheduling. But So I had all these scripts lying around, and we're like, let's let's see if we can adapt this. This is kind of fun and silly, and it's light, and we, it can be like so many pages. Um, so, in, in the case of, you know, I'm going to try and, like, ver merge both these processes into one point, just so you can hear the origins of both. So, for the anthology, it's the research. For the original, it's kind of like us 
thinking of ideas or looking at old ideas we had and seeing what we can do with them. Yeah, well, like, I mean, the only, um, like, the only stuff I've really written is, like, some of the Shrub Monkeys, which is just coming up with ideas, like, oh, that would be funny, and then just jotting it down. But um, for my anthology project comic um, with the silent story with the guy getting a coffee, um, mm. it doesn't really explain it very well. But, like, it was just kind <laughs> of, you, you designed a character, and you came up with this crazy idea of, like, a, because I asked you for a story, and you were like, oh, how about this, like, muscle man kind of character. And I was like, okay, okay. And I wanted to do a quieter story. I didn't want to do something wacky. But I'd come up with designs for this character based on what you said. And then I was like, well, who is this guy? And then I just kind of kept oh, I didn't know that part. <laughs> yeah, because he started off as a muscle man. And then I was like, well, let's take him out of the barbells and put him in, like, a suit and a hat. And what does he like to do? He likes to read. And he has a dog. He takes his dog for walks. Oh, he lives in, like, Paris and goes for walks, maybe. And then now he's in a coffee shop. So I was coming up with what would be a cute story, and then I made it into, like, a little... Because the theme of that was, like, um... The theme of that book was obsession, but you could take it however you wanted it. You could make it darker mm -hmm. or lighter, but I was like, how about, like, the, the cute... Not the creepy obsession, but, like, when you first meet someone, you can't stop thinking about them. So I was t trying yeah, yeah, yeah. to make a short story about that. So, I mean, it was kind of... I remember for a long time I couldn't come up with an idea, but just kind of slowly started piecing together. And then the way I write is thumbnailing. It's just kind of coming up with the shots in my head. The way you write, though, is very script. script well, I basically, when, once we've like kind of landed on the story, we're going to either adapt or do. It's I've I'm kind of gone either have like the my favorite two or three scenes in my head already, and I'm mm -hmm. like I want these things to happen at some point. Now let's bridge them all together. So like my script will start like on you know you know Act Three. I'll start a scene and then like write the finish and then write the beginning and then start merging it together and dialogue and stuff until I have the first pass, version one of whatever the story is. And then I'll do maybe two or three more passes before I even give it to Katie because I like reread it a bunch of times and be like, oh, I want to change this, change that, this character's unnecessary, something like that. Um, especially in the case of uh, the one from Explorer, Fairy, um, the Radio Adrift, mm -hmm. uh, Lost, on the Lost Islands Explorer anthology. That one I rewrote myself like, a huge amount of times before I even showed it to Katie. Like, the story changed drastically. Mm -hmm. Like, it wasn't panning out. Like, I, I liked a lot of stuff, but the conclusion wasn't happening for me. But there's more story to that, anyway. Um, yeah, at this point, then, at this point, I have a finished, you know, version three or four script I give to Katie. She goes over, gives her a pass. I take her notes into account, start reprocessing this and that. And kind of from there, it's like there will be maybe two or three more versions, like a six and a seven, while it starts drawing, because some things have to change. And then after that, any other changes to script is just based on drawing, being like, uh, this isn't working, can he do this instead? Yeah, like, because when I get the script to start thumbnailing, um, I might catch stuff that, like, I don't know if, if this, like, even just for for simpler ways to draw something, where it's like, I think it would be funnier and simpler if the scene played out like this. So it's, it's just having another set of eyes to look at the what's happening and interpret it into the drawing. Because, I mean, it's, it's like we say it a lot of times, some people script stuff very directly, like panel one um, is a shot of two characters facing each other in a coffee shop. Panel two, close up, as uh, the first character has a disagreeable look on their face, uh, looking slightly down at a newspaper. Yeah. Like, you, you don't write any of that stuff. You're just like, you I'm, know, John, John and Cindy are look, in a coffee shop, Cindy looks at a newspaper, and then you let me... Yeah. Um, I'm not, myself, which I'm I prefer. Not so, oh. I, I don't think I could work the other way, because I like to... You know, it's like with storyboards. I like to have the script and then, like, go with it. Um, but I know some artists like to have that direction, but I prefer to yeah. kind of put my well, own take on it. Well, because some of the writers have like this movie in their head already, where they see every single angle specifically. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll only do that for certain ones if it's for like dramatic, you know, intention or a, or humor pause. Like I'll the only times I'll say like this ha there's like a three panel beat, like an action happens, everyone stares stunned, then someone says something, and that's the only time I will say across three panels this happens because I know like that timing's funnier if it's like that versus me being like it all happens in you know in one panel or whatever. Otherwise, I tend to just say, you know, here's the page, what the characters do and say, and it's basically up to Katie to lay that out however she wants, like what she sees, what's the best angle. I'll once in a while, like, say if there's a planning scene, it's like, okay, this, it starts as a high angle, but then after that, it's like, go nuts, you know, because... Yeah, if it's something yeah. specific, I'll do that. Yeah, and even that will change, too, depending on the layout, but, like, for me, that's the only time I'm ever really specific, is if it's, like, I really need... 
people to see it from this angle for whatever reason. But the rest of the comic, I'm not too, I'm not strict on at all. I'm not. I don't, need, I don't need to be over this guy's shoulder when he says this, over that guy's shoulder when he says that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, but once again, the rest kind of comes from just it being drawn out. Like once we get to a part, we'll have to debate over something and see if it works or not. But yeah. uh, that's kind of the writing process, and then we send it to mother for spell check. <laughs> <laughs> And she catches so many. Because she catches all the there and theirs. And <laughs> I'm pretty good, but I don't catch everything. Yeah, well, because, yeah, Photoshop doesn't have the spell check, so if I didn't catch Should. it on the first pass, we're screwed the second time. Yeah. And uh, that's the Shannon Hannigan's process. We're making comments. Yeah. Oh, learning. Uh, yeah. Quickly, Kriya Porpoise saying, Darn, I'm heading to Toronto in the three weeks, and Tacom Bravo is the last thing I'm doing. Cool, well, uh, you know. I mean, we'll probably be around-ish. I don't know. Three weeks. Is that June? Is that in time for Taffy? or it's July. July in three Tom weeks. Probably in July. But, like, is Taffy, is if she's coming Taffy's three in three weeks, June. will she catch Taffy, or is that too soon? Oh, um, yeah, maybe. Three weeks from now. Possibly. The Taffy Toronto Arts and Animations Festival, which is happening June 13th weekend, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to be a fun time. There's going to be uh, a lot of animators and folk coming in to give talks and a lot of uh, screenings, and they're doing their first Taffy Market, which is like a little uh, artist alley, and we will be exhibiting there. Cool. So I'm excited awesome. to see how that goes. It's been really fun. I've enjoyed Taffy in the past. I'm looking forward to seeing it this year. Hmm. Also, tech support saying the first feature film to use Xerox cells was 101 Dalmatians in 1961. That's very specific. <laughs> Thank you, Wiki. <laughs> Glad we know that now, everybody. <laughs> he oh, does have the great. illusion of life, though. <laughs> that does seem to be all the questions we have, and we are coming up on the half hour. Are we wrapping? Ten thirty. We should, because this, this has been just about two hours show. Yeah, this um, is good. I finished all my my sushi candies, and they're really good. I recommend oh, I check these out. <laughs> I just kind of like nervously went through all of them when we were talking about art and stuff. I'm like, <laughs> I, 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 I assume they're not too different from these, though. These Tetris candies are probably the same damn thing. Yeah, I want to try those. Yeah, no, it's good. You're the um, one with the Tetris magnets on your fridge, right? Yes. I set it up in that maddening thing where it's all lined up, and then there's the one side that's just uh, the sticks. And then towards the top, there's like the little T bar was put in wrong, <laughs> blocking it. Uh, Easy. Uh, cool. Alright, so, this is Shannon Hagen's Live, of course, this is our recap. TCAF, VanCAF, VanCAF recap. Overall, VanCAF is a fantastic show. If you're in the Vancouver area and you haven't gone yet, it's absolutely free. Mm. Uh, it's two days of all your favorite web creators, uh, special guest panels and stuff. Oh, Andrew wants to know X-Men thoughts. Uh, go see it. I was I was thoroughly, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I have no complaints. Like, you know, people can be like, oh, continuity and blah 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 and I'm like, Eh, I'm too old for that crap. Andrew, I enjoy... be, all I gotta say is it's gonna be more entertaining than what you saw this morning. What is this morning? Twitter thing. It's, it's Twitter. What, what was it's the Twitter, Twitter thing? Am I not allowed to see? Oh God, I did read that. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> oh, okay. the point is, it's Sorry, more family fun. A... <laughs> um, Off screen if, stuff. If you're if you're like on the fence, like oh my God, like X Men two and three were terrible. Uh, and so was Wolverine. Well, well, no, people like two, didn't they? All right, X Men Three was terrible, and so was Wolverine Origins. I didn't bother with anything else and stuff. You know, uh, re- you know first of all, you should have checked out the Wolverine, not not Origins, but the new one, <laughs> the Bullshit. Because that I watched on the plane, the first half on a plane, and the second half on another plane. That's how it I got thoroughly, you. It didn't let I, you finish it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I had a really good time with it. And as I said, I'm like, I I feel like this is like the Wolverine TV series. I want like every week on HBO. Wolverine is up to something else. Like I would yeah, enjoy that. It works for me. Check that out. Um, and first class, people had mixed thoughts. I thought it was fun. <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed first class for what it was. And so Days of Future Past, I'm like, check it out. It was entertaining. I enjoyed it. The the beginning interest sequence, I sat there and it's like one of those like you know mar you know early Marvel movie genetic interest sequences. Ooh. It's like zooming around genes and shit. I'm just like, I thought, why are we done with this? Was this Spider Man? Well, like, all of them were doing it. Hulk was, like, anger potion, and Captain America was, like, roids and stuff. It was just, like, all the interest sequences were, like, roids. going through genetics. And I'm like, I'd have been happy if Captain America was just pecs. Oh, yeah. Oh, so it was just, like, you know, like, the Batman logo, how it's, like, going around the bat symbol? Yeah. Really close up, so you don't know what it's till the end. If it was just, like, 
a real close up of Chris <laughs> what's his face's chest and like the camera zips by a nipple and there's like there's like names by it and stuff. <laughs> Sam Jackson is by like his belly button sticking out. Oh, that'd be the best. <laughs> it's like we should do that for something. That would be the That's best. hilarious. That's gonna be like when I make a movie, my main character will be like a zip around of his awesome pecs. Um <laughs> story story short. Yeah, uh, well, we got Sarah saying, my friend worked on X-Men, and he said they weren't sure what the reception. So far, it feels like it. You know, it's it's fun. Like, the main thing the Marvel movies had to figure out was not to take themselves too seriously. Yeah. And that's where they were going wrong, and also overdoing there a, it. There was a funny um, Jim Zub interview from Emerald City where he talks about the um, the Marvel versus the DC, where DC, you're like, oh, so that was Batman. I don't really feel very good because <laughs> it's just so dark. <laughs> but then Marvel, it's like, oh, it's a good time. You know, you're guaranteed to have a good time. It's going to be goofy. Sure, I'll yeah. just go in and have fun. And, I, think, and like, I found that, like, stuff, like, I don't totally get everything happening in Thor, but I was like, I had a lot of fun. And these weren't yeah. comics I read, but I thoroughly enjoyed these characters. Like, if you're a diehard fan, you're like, that's not how Days of Future Past went at all. Oh, like, I can't help you here. I'm sorry. But at the same time, why not accept the fact that you enjoyed the comic and this is a different interpretation of that story, yeah. you know, and shut your face and stop ruining it for the rest of us? Because I had a good time, I enjoyed it. Maybe if I went back over, I'd be a little more nitpicky. But like the main criticism I have is there was the zoom around stuff at the beginning is like a little too much because it's like they're zooming around the genetics and stuff and metal and air hangers, and mm -hmm. then they're like zooming out of stuff, and then they do a scene, and then they zoom out of more stuff and zoom into a jet. I'm just like. This is like I know you made this for the three D audience, but it's really not necessary. It's really yeah. stupid. But once like you know, you know, Hugh Jackman has always been charming. Like I really enjoyed not Origins, but I really enjoyed the Wolverine. It was a fun movie, and I want more of just him bumming around and doing stuff. Hmm. So uh, I recommend checking it out. Full review. Check it out. <laughs> um, uh, we also have Molly saying, having this on in the background helped me finish coloring this Yay! page of my web comic. You guys chatting helps me focus. Uh, so thanks, guys. I'll have to make this a weekly thing for coloring on Photoshop while well, listening to you guys. Please do. But don't write it down on your calendar, because sometimes <laughs> it's Tuesday <laughs> at 8, or 8.30 Eastern, sometimes it's Wednesday. Who the frig knows? I'll just click this. Andrew said, ooh, in response to the thing he saw. <laughs> and Andrew Murray sees things that few of us can't get unseen. to. Yeah. He's <laughs> and that, and that voice from Nutella and Pop-Tarts. He needs some... He's some cheering up. He's some old town comfort. Dan Hagen's live. Oh my goodness, this show is like on Tuesday sometimes. This is why we didn't put it down on the sticker. We, I I deleted like the date because I'm like I don't think we're, the sticker is gonna help you. It's, like, it's, oh, like, it's this could be the Wednesday show. Yeah. Um. It's it's the ebb and flow. It's how it's the. I'm trying to think of one of those like inspiring Disney quotes where it's like the, you know, the little leaf is in the pond and it's alone, but in spring it will have friends and it's like oh. We that are didn't the happen in Mulan, movie. but the point is, <laughs> you will bloom and kill Shere Khan or whoever. Else. Point is... Sean Yu. That guy, too. All of the Disney villains Mulan is out to get. She is an assassin, and that would be my favorite miniseries. Oh, no. This show happens. <laughs> you want to check it out. Uh, oh, we got Uncle Sai popping in just now saying, Phew, only just got here, watching too much Movie Bob. Uh, I do, too. But I... I Unless, I, all right, there's, there's Movie Bob from The Escapist with his uh, big picture, which is good because it's usually talking about comics. He actually did an episode on She-Hulk, which is really cool. Uh, head over to The Escapist and look up Movie Bob uh, for uh, the big the bigger picture, the big picture. And his other show, of course, is The Review Show, which I don't watch if I know I'm seeing. I basically, if I know I'm seeing a movie anyway, I don't watch the reviews. And, mm -hmm. you know, because I'd rather... Well, I want to watch it. Myself. See what I, yeah. Because because I was even reading some people's like thoughts on uh, the X Men movie on Twitter, just like, oh, this character wasn't necessary and stuff. And then that's in my head when I go to the theaters, and yeah, I don't you want to be that. able to feel it. Because I I fear. All right, I'm gonna just say this quickly. The thing I fear and hate about reviews is they do give you pre like pre notion of I how you're going to experience the movie because you're like, oh my god, the scene where, you know, the, the kitchen where this happens, that was so distracting. Then when you're watching the movie, you're looking for this. You you're should looking read for the reviews thing they you said. Know. You should read, like, is it good or is it bad? It's good? Okay, yeah, I'll check yeah. it out. And then afterwards, like, you check to I, see if yeah. you agree with the opinions. Like, I, I avoid reviews a lot. Like, the thing I just need to hear is more the word of mouth, just being like, should I see this Spider-Man? And most people are just like, oh god, it's boring, don't do it. And I'm like, yeah. okay, I'll wait till I'm at home to see it. 
Yeah. So that's all or we're doing. We can watch it outside at Comic Con again next oh, summer. Because I actually really enjoyed watching uh, that last uh, Spider-Man just because we were outside under the stars. And yeah, we were sitting were in this around, little, have candy. This little market outside of San Diego just by, yeah, the, by the harbor. And there's fireworks and there's Spider-Man playing by a fountain. Yeah, it was uh, Sitting by a puppet shop. Like, what magical Pinocchio world is this that we're watching Marvel movies in? <laughs> Not everyone can have that experience, though, so it's biased. Uh, we also have Molly saying, actually, it pops up on my cell phones when you guys have a live stream. It's oh, awesome. good. Thanks, Google+. Plus. Finally, someone likes Google Plus for some <laughs> It does remind you when it's time to go on. Yeah, <laughs> the like. books! Oh my goodness, we had them. We sold out of uh, all the Silly Kingdoms we brought, but ooh, ooh, we uh... guarantee you can still get yours. Uh, go to SillyKingdom.com. Yes, right or here. under Katie's desk. Right here. Silly Kingdom. Silly Kingdom. What? That. Alan Gerber oh, yes. no, spell Pronounce just as it says. As la, 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 Alan Gerber la, 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 211th birthday. Uh... This is, this is the book that you want. Actually, I can just click your camera so you see it. Yeah, just click this my camera. This is the book that you want. It. Go to SillyKingdom.com. Spell it like it sounds. You can get this. You can also pre-order. I don't know if we have any more uh, any more of those postcards. Uh, give me a sec. Coming soon. We'll switch to me. Then. Coming absolutely soon. Silly Kingdom. It's not actually called Silly Kingdom 2, but for now, it'll just be a Silly Kingdom the follow-up. A new steed indeed. Which Katie has just got her hands on uh, one of these lovely postcards, of course, the cover colored by the illustrious Jason Cafo. The delightful. Uh, yes, breathtaking Jason Cafo. The uh, magnificent Jason Cafo. The, the marvelous. The Jason stupendous Cafo. Jason Cafo. I'm just thinking of like Marvel things now, where it's like the incredible Jason Cafo, the Jason Cafo, <laughs> the daredevilist. Uncanny Jason Cafo. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you're going to want to go to SillyKingdom.com and pre-order that. And you can get a copy that has it signed and stuff. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. What else? Signed and stuff, then. Um, um, yeah. We yeah, got the Scrub Monkeys to... books, too, of course. You want to uh, you want to catch up. You want to collect them all, have them all in one place? You want to get yourself a Scrub Monkey book. And you can also order that. Not at the Silly Kingdom site, but you can go to the Shan Hannigan's website. Mm-hmm. S-H-A-N. A-H-A-N. I-G-A-N-S. Yes. Dot com. Um, uh, and then you can actually order these on uh, the Shannon Hannigan site as well, if you choose. Yes. So you, we can bulk them to bundle them together and save you on shipping. Yeah, well, yes. I guess. We, we keep the Silly <laughs> Kingdom uh, shop separate just because sometimes it's... Uh, you, parents will come by and they'll be like, oh, Shaw Monkeys, is this good for kids? And I'm like, it's not not good for kids, but it's about a 20-year-old's lifestyle, yeah. so I don't think they'll get it. <laughs> Some of our lives are terribly interesting to these kids. We're like, taxes, and they're just like, Digimon! Yeah, I'm like, there's a little bit of swearing. Like, I took out the bad words, but I'd yeah. say it's more PG-13. Yeah, yeah, there's a little, little cuss mouth going on there. Uh, you want to get that, too. Uh, upcoming events, uh, Taffy, Toronto, Taffy. Arts, Animation. Animation. Festival. Festival. International. Fun. That. That's coming up in June, and we're going to have a table there. I don't know where it is. Do you know where it is? Uh, I think it's at the Chorus Building on Queen's Key. But the information will be on the site, T-A-A-F-I.com. Mm. Oh, actually, we got a quick question here from Lillian. Uh, have you seen the project called Miss Officer and Mr. Truffles? Yes. It looks interesting. <laughs> Not only did we see it, we met like a whole bunch of the creators... Yeah, uh, we're over at they're actually at VanCap, and uh, yeah. they gave it. Oh, I have a button from it. Where is it? I got a button. Whoop! Look at that buttons. Do you have it There's, clicked on you? Uh, no, but here it is. Ooh yeah! So you want to look that up? Basically, it's about this officer lady and a bear, and they have adventures named Truffles. Yes. It looks adorable. Uh, so look that stuff up. There's also uh, the same people behind the Sailor Moon, Moon Animate. Correct. Um, right. the, the cool gal who runs uh, Moon Animate. Is it called Moon Animate or Moon Animate Makeup? I think, it's, it's, I think it's Moon Animate. Which is a whole bunch of people totally reanimating an episode of Sailor Moon in their own style. Um, is, I believe, spearheading the uh, uh, Miss Officer of Mr. Truffles animation project. And I'm very excited for it. Mm, we're looking forward to that. But you also look forward to Ta. Nope, not that. Uh, Animac TO is tomorrow night. Oh, yes. Uh, Yes, so if you want we should to go. hear... We should go. Um, our friend Andrew Murray runs it, and uh, it's it's a whole host of different lectures with animators, comic artists, 
um, game designers, developers, uh, people that have run their own shows. There's been a lot of really good episodes in the past, and I think this is the last one of this season, so uh, you're going to want to check it out because they might be taking a little break for a bit. But it's a fun time. If you're in Toronto and want to get to know your local art community, come on out. It's at the Rhino at, I believe, 7, um, but you can check it out on the Animatic TO Facebook page. Cool, cool. Uh, any other announcements? Do you have any other events coming up? Um, uh, I think that's it for this week. Yeah, I'm just going to eat all this candy. <laughs> uh, Uncle Sai is saying they're looking for voice actors for Miss Officer and Mr. Truffles, Shaggy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, well I, I thought, didn't they already cast? I thought they already got their voice actors. That was a little while ago. Like, I, I may submit something if they need, like, extras. I'll just be some guy in the background yelling and be like, oh, Miss Officer, Mr. Truffles, and something like that. But uh, we'll see what happens. I'll, I'll, you know, I want to send the demo reel around. We'll see what I do. We'll see what I'm Yeah, let's go know. for it. Uh, yeah, so our Twitters and Tumblers, of course. Katie Shy. Katie Shy. Shaggy Shan. Shaggy Shan. Also go to uberfriendship.com for articles and things like that. Uh, Graham will be seeing the X-Men movie tonight, so he'll probably be having his Graham grumbles coming up on his uh, thoughts on the movie. I enjoy that blog so title. That yeah. I got nothing else. It is really warm in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm done. <laughs> All right. Guys, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we will see you next week. Could be a Tuesday, could be a Wednesday. Stay tuned to the Facebook and our Twitters to find out for sure. Yep. Be sure to We're like the Facebook unpredictable. page. Be sure to like the Shannon Hannigan's Facebook page, as well as, if you're watching this on Google+, Plus, add it to your circle. I don't know. Do something like that. And that way I can keep track of you guys, add you to the uh, video list, and I can like, send you guys all links and stuff like that. Cool. I am sweating Whoa. buckets. <laughs> I should take this winter hat off. Yeah, you really uh, should. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Bye, cool. guys. All right, see ya. Ciao, right. ciao.